York's Country 94.7 is WNSH, FM, and HD1 Network. New York City and Odyssey Station. This is New York's Country 94.7. This day is different from all others. I am Kelly Ford. I will start by saying be very, very specific when you make a wish. In August... I said to myself, I made a wish. I said, I really want to work at not getting up at 4 a.m. ever again. I should have added, and not be unemployed. (laughs) More specific. So I have a room full of amazing people, some of them virtually here, because we have an announcement to make. Everybody make some noise. Hey. Hi. Hello. This is the team, the team from the very beginning, 2013, that signed on New York's country, 94.7, and we've acquired some amazing people along the way. And today, we are here to tell you that this is the last day New York's country, 94.7, will be on the air. You created this. We are ever so grateful for you today. We are going to take our time today to say goodbye to you because you deserve that. We deserve that. And we're so grateful that we have the opportunity to do that. I mean, that is not afforded. (laughs) I can't look at Katie. I know. Um, That is not afforded to a lot of people. So I cannot express enough the gratitude we have to be able to do that because a lot of times in radio you know you just disappear nobody gets to say goodbye so uh we uh we are very grateful for that so we're here for you 844-947-0947 because you've been here for us from the beginning and so i just want to go around the room right now and make sure you know everyone who is here i am kelly ford Jonah, the new guy, morning on the show. We've got Sabrina from Queens, who's on the show every morning here with us. Katie Neal, our midday host, who has been here from the beginning, as well as Jesse Addy, our afternoon guy. Jason Goldstein, who is behind the scenes and has been part of the morning show on and off. Our fearless leader, John Fox, who has really uh, been there from the beginning as well. We've got support people, uh, so many people, Clay Walker, a a lot of people who have really been so instrumental in making New York's country 94-7 a success over the years, but most importantly, you. So all this went down yesterday, late in the day. We've, uh, We've had a little time to process it. It was such a beautiful day. And I don't know about you guys, but it it genuinely felt like one of those days that I will remember in slow motion forever. Because it is, I look around this room and all of the people in this room really have been here since the beginning. And when you think about the life of this station, it's, it's more than just a business. It's to us. This has been this has been a mission for us. And the reason I do feel like we got to or we're getting to say goodbye is that we left it all out on the field. Right? You did right by us and uh hopefully we're doing right by you. So uh it, it has been for me, a personal growth journey that I can't even begin to explain. I moved here with my daughter when she was 11 years old, and she's now a senior in college. I, I, uh, I, I got younger and older all at the same time. <laughs> a, a growth journey that I cannot even put words to. Some of the most amazing times of my life and not all great, honestly. Not all great. But some uh, in, in some of that, that greatness and, and just the past year and a half, being on the air, getting people through the pandemic. I mean, we're going to tell some of those stories this morning of just what this, what being on the air has meant to me my whole career has always been about connection. 
You guys know that and how I feel about connecting to people. And just that in and of itself, the people I talk to every morning, you guys know this because you do it all day long. But that kind of impact has been, I mean, priceless for me. So it's uh, to, to tell my personal story. Also, John Fox believing in me three years ago as a woman, one of the really the only solo female host in the country, but also in New York City and definitely in country radio. That don't happen, son. <laughs> And uh, this is my dream come true, because these guys know how scattered I am. And in radio, to do like, you've got to get in there in seven seconds and hook them and get them in. And I tell the best bar story in three hours ever. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I just, uh, it has meant the world to me. This city took me in. It embraced me to be part of this station, not just when I started in middays. But then moved to Nashville to be on the morning show here. Then they moved me back because of listeners who made it happen. I I got let go. And the listeners here made so much noise that it brought me back. So I'll never forget that. And I I called them out by name then. Lisa Hope, I'll call them out again. (laughs) I mean, I'll never, ever forget that. This city is the greatest city in the world. And it it just means so... Everybody in this room has a story about it. And so thank you. And and we're going to have people on all morning morning long. Blair Garner, Ty and Chuck, we hope to have them on. And, of course, you, 844-947-0947. And I do... I want to welcome Jonah. Poor Jonah. (laughs) Poor Jonah. We brought him on board, you know, eight months ago. And I swear... We were just, <laughs> we were just getting it, and we were just killing it. I, I, I remember the phone call like it was yesterday. I was sitting in my house in St. Louis. As you like to say, you rescued me from St. Louis, and that's 100% true. Talking to you for hours on the phone about plans for the show, about visions that you wanted to do, and bringing me back to New York was such an honor. And to be in this room with the most talented people in the world is, I mean, it's still overwhelming. Whenever I post on Instagram, which isn't enough, sorry boss, I can't (laughs) help but say something about that because this group of people is so amazing and Kelly, thank you uh, for believing in me and and welcoming me in in this way and you were right, we were just getting started and it's been, it's just been so awesome. Really, truly, this kid was on the phone with me in my very first alternate parking experience. <laughs> and I'll never forget. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What do I do? It's coming. It's coming. He's like, stay calm. Stay calm. <laughs> That's when she knew you were the one. And I did say to him, this is, I want to have the most epic radio show ever, ever. And uh, I think we, you know what? It, I think we feel like all of us in this room, no matter what anybody else thinks, it's mission accomplished for us because we know, we know we we did it. We know, as I said, we left it all out on the field. We were here hours, hours every day. So many hours. So yeah, he's like, is this going to be normal forever, <laughs> Kelly? Are we like the other morning shows in the building left a long time ago? Why is it three o'clock and we're still here? Hey, again, careful what you wish for, because here we go. Yeah. So, uh, and and I'll tell you this: this is the other thing that's been great about this crew, Jonah. Uh, that you, I, people say, oh, why did you hire him? I go, because he's a really nice person. And I tell you what, this whole team, people look at us around this building, they're like, what? Wait, where are they? Why? They get along. They're so, what? yeah. No, because it's a group of really freaking nice people. All right, if you could see our group chats. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesse Addy can't see him because he has an Android. <laughs> Not even on the last day will you let that go. Is Jesse, Jesse comment on the Android? Oh, I'm just acting like I didn't hear that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get no it. There's always the one person who sends the group chat to Green, and it is Jesse Addy in this group chat. <laughs> Yo, but, Kelly, it's yeah. funny, your line about leaving it all on the field, and, and I think that's because that's what was demanded of us when we got here, you and I, from the listeners, right? I mean, you said so many times, like, you know, just never seen <clears> – <throat> I didn't think I'd get this emotional early, but it's early um, – we just never seen that kind of passion, you know, from, from country music fans across the country. And I agree, at least unlike any other radio station, I've worked at because of the listeners. And it, it, it demanded everything. And we gave it. 
And uh, that's funny. Jesse, Eddie, and I were the original on the air. We called each other Shake and Bake. And back, way back to then, to, to your point, Jonah, we would be like, are we going to have to work this hard forever? And it turns out we were. <laughs> we did. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Jesse, obviously you from the beginning have been here, even when I went to Nashville and wasn't here physically but on the air. You've kind of been a fearless leader on the air. I just, you know, for me, um, just to be that, you know, the, the person that when you get in your car and you're driving home from work and it just to be that voice like, okay, day's over, things are good, you know. I try to be in a, a good mood because this is the greatest job in the greatest city in the world, so. What a pleasure. Feb- I think it's February 19th is the day we met, Kelly. Oh, my gosh. You remembered our February anniversary. February 19th, 2013. <laughs> I know. And I said to you the night at Roseland Ballroom, we'll always remember this night because we're going to know each other the rest of our lives. Hold on, Jess. I'm trying to figure out your technical issue real quick. Uh, actually, let me talk to everybody else. Sabrina, don't log back on there. Don't log back on. There's a huge thing. I'm just going to, because Jesse sounds so much better right now. Everybody stay off a of clean feed. There's there's real talk. We can be real talk right now, okay? Yeah, but well, take, take a second there. You sound so much better. Breathe, Raul, breathe. We said a little prayer. Here's the honest to God's truth. You want a little insider? We said a little prayer right before we went on. Help us find the right words. Help us find the right things to say that connect with the people who have created this station jason goldstein is taking calls right now we don't care we're making noise he's Somebody, hiding he's Stephanie. literally ducked hey, down in the corner you're steph, good jason. i'm gonna i'm gonna log you off hey katie will you text steph and tell her we're gonna keep her off there for a while there you go uh jeff jesse back to uh loving me <laughs> no i just did, you know that night we <laughs> didn't know what to do he's like oh uh did i write any other things <laughs> right, down back to loving me <laughs> No. I, no, I, I got to the end of my notes there. Is to, there anything else? I to go back to that original story, this is how it, Nash Bash, when we were, I got to find your favorite thing. Oh, my gosh. Mike will love this. Where's our Nash no. FM? Thank you for checking. Um, I'll find a minute. But, uh, oh, here it is. You'll love this, Jess. It's your dream come true. Jesse Eddy made everything this. Nash FM, 94, 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have missed that so much. I was thinking about that yesterday, like how much I love singing that jingle and how special it was when we would go to shows at like Irving Plaza and we would yell Nash FM on stage and people would always sing back 94 7. We would sing the jingle to everything though. Like when it, you know, we'd get pizza, I was like, pizza's here. <laughs> <laughs> everything. Kelly, Kelly, everything. Kelly. Oh my gosh. Well, two seconds. We're going to, we're going to. Let somebody very special in here. You guys are going to die. Look who came in to say goodbye. It's Scott Shannon. Hey! Hey, what's up? Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Katie. <laughs> Where's Jesse? He's Jesse's on here. He's on the, on the line. Zoom. He's on Hi, the Jesse Zoom. Computer. How you doing? I know. I worked with Jesse before. <laughs> I like him. He's a good guy. He's a good guy, yeah. That's why we kept <laughs> him so long. Don't forget That's Kelly. going on the resume. That's going right on this the resume. Is, uh, this is horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. You. I'm sorry. I just, uh, I'm a big country music fan, and, and uh, I just, uh, I just love you guys and the job that you've done. It's been a very professional sounding radio station, and you've got so many fans in the tri-state area. And uh, well, business is business, yeah. but sometimes it hurts. Yeah. I just wish, I just wish you guys all the luck in the world. And thank you for doing a great job over the... How long has it been? Two years? <laughs> Eight years. Eight years? Eight years. No, no, oh, mean, with you guys. Eight years. <laughs> with you guys. Yeah, we were owned by another company. Yeah, and, and, and they worked at the same station I worked at. Yeah. And we all got thrown out. <laughs> shut the whole damn thing it down. It is the biz. <laughs> My favorite story of Scott, and I, I, I knew you briefly at the other station. You were always very gracious and cool to me. I all kinds of crap with you. <laughs> But when I uh, got let go in Nashville, Scott called me out and I'm like, oh my God, Scott Shannon's calling me. And he said, Kelly, you ought to, you ought to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to do a Scott Shannon voice. But you said, you, you need to go for this job. You need to. You need to run your own show and quit being at the mercy of other people. Yeah. 
I think you said men. Other, other semi-talented individuals. <laughs> <laughs> and really, it was, what I told <laughs> and it was his motivation. Honestly, you'll never know what that call meant to me that day. It was so special. And the next thing I know, I said, you're good, and you just you need to be in the right spot. And that spot is behind that microphone where you are now. Mm-hmm. That's pretty sure cool. I'm land on your feet. I'm, oh, you know what? I, I, I believe that, too. I feel like One I... One door d- closes, the other door opens. More than anything, I'm just, uh, I'm, 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 I'm just, for our listeners, I'm sad. But I love you. Thank you so much for coming in today. I can't imagine the phone lines today. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Any other words of wisdom? My Scott Shannon? Here. Oh, yes, he's under Scott. We've been through the war before. Yeah, we've, done, we've, we've been here a few times, Scott. <laughs> You yeah. haven't lived till you work with a cumulus people. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Thank you, Thank you, Scott. Bye bye, buckaroos. Wow. <laughs> All right, we've got so much more to talk about. Mike Allen just joined us. Yay, Mike! Mike Allen! Mike, 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 Mike! Um, can oh, we hear Mike? Mike is on. I'm not so sure he's on yet. Hey. Tell you what. <laughs> Here he comes. Wait. <laughs> Wait <laughs> tell you what. How about this? How about Hello? we just play a song? Hello. Regroup. Hello. We're going to Mike yeah. Allen. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> you can hear me now. You sound like you're like, welcome to Wendy's, which is where you'll see all of us in the future. <laughs> <laughs> you got an hour. We'll be right back. Today is the last day of New York's country, 94.7. We are here to say goodbye, feel the love, and share it with you. We've got big, big plans. Hello. 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 (laughs) This is New York's country, 94.7. Today is the very last day we will be on the air, and we are taking the opportunity and ever so grateful for the opportunity to be able to say goodbye to you every single one of you if we can but they've given us no time limit so <laughs> we could be here a while squatters rights as long as you don't leave the studio they can't ask us to leave 844-947-0947 got everyone in here Jonah the new guy right. Sabrina from Queens midday host Katie Neal Jesse Addy from Afternoons Jason Goldstein who's been like he, we call him our secret weapon he's been on the air he's been off the air we've got Mike Allen who's uh, no longer with the station but was such a huge part of the history of the station and of course uh, I want to go back to Jesse and the origins of the beginning of the station because really everyone everyone in this room was here at the beginning. Oh, John Fox too who's not in the room at the moment except uh, Jonah and Sabrina who we acquired along the way and we're so grateful for but uh, we were all there at the beginning. I was, I was the first voice heard on New York's Country 94.7. Well, it was Nash then. It was... <laughs> Nash FM. <laughs> and uh, it's ironic. I said yesterday when I when I got the talking to, I was the first voice on the station, and I guess I'm going to be the last voice heard on the station. <laughs> but Jesse and I met. We were flown in secretly, and they said, don't talk to anyone at the big Nash Bash concerts. I had someone, you remember uh, Linda that worked at the station? She looked at me, and she goes, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Ooh, this is, fair. this is this is great." We met, and and you were up on the balcony. I remember the spot because Jen Jeffries, who who believed in me for this job, thank you, Jen, was like, "That's Kelly up there." Don't tell anybody. So I had to act like I was just randomly going get it a drink <laughs> and, and introduce myself, and then I'm like, "I'm from married. that." I was then anyway. <laughs> Talk about things that have so changed. So much growth. <laughs> so much growth. I just, you know, those three nights, I mean, the artists of the caliber of, of Blake and Hauser, and I mean, it was like three nights, Roseland Ballroom sold. I mean, it was crazy. Kicks Brooks is standing there. I mean, I, I listen to like so many Brooks and Dunn songs. You know, Red Dirt Road still makes me tear. I'm there. I'm having this conversation with Kicks Brooks, and he was helping launch the station. It was electric the way this this station started and those tickets were so hard to get too they were free i mean the city went nuts because they had been without a country station for 17 years or we had been and so people just went nuts for it and you know i said this at stars and strings which was a wild success and such an amazing magical night on 9 11 you know the thing we learned 
during the pandemic was that if there's one thing we know, the people who kept this city running, the first responders, the frontline heroes, the essential workers, mm. people for people who said that country music is not the soundtrack of this city, we know, we know those people the people who kept this city running 24 7 were the darkest days of this city they they know what the soundtrack of the city is so that's why Very we were well so said. proud to be able to to say goodbye to you today it means a ton you know what i also think in that first year are the uh, thursday night new jersey country uh, bar <laughs> oh wars. my god blue hill house that? yes shout out to robbie carujo pub 46 uh, Mother's Ale House. It was literally even behind the scenes. They were pitting me versus Kelly at Blue Ale House. Oh was, yeah, they were. We were doing two country nights. They were packed. They were like ten miles apart. I literally Everybody, just like, talked to Jared Shabab the other day. Like it was, it was like yes, they were like oh, <laughs> and then their names were similar too. Oh yeah, yeah. it was, like, it was <laughs> like the Pebble Wars. <laughs> it was the best. Yeah, it was so Katie fun. Was obviously, I was Katie selling was ads at that time. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Bringing Katie in, Katie was in. Katie was at yeah. the beginning of the station too. She just wasn't on the air yet. Yeah, I remember. I had just moved here right out of college. I had quit my on-air job, and I was like, I'm going to take a sales job in New York. And like three days after I got there, they called everybody into the conference room, and they're like, "We are launching a new station." And I was like, "Cool, what is it?" And they started playing Randy Hauser, "How Country Feels," and everyone in the room was like. What's country music? And I was like fresh out of the Midwest, and I was like, "You guys don't know these songs." Like, She's what? like, "I'm from Peoria, what are you y'all." Talking about yeah, <laughs> I'm from Bargainville, Illinois. Like, let me tell you something. And so I felt like I had a leg up on everybody in the beginning because no one knew the artists or the songs or like the vibe of country music. And then I just yeah, I remember being like, I didn't know you guys, and I didn't know you guys for a while. Like, like trying to get to know you, but I was selling ads for the station, and that's what I did for the first four years that I lived here. And then I started doing weekends. I somehow like finagled my way into that. John Fox one night fed me a shot of Jack Daniels and was like, "We're gonna pre-record a show and see how it sounds, and if it works, we'll keep doing this." And that's what we There's did. John Fox, he's so proud for all his <laughs> broadcasting experiments. I was just telling the story about how you gave me a shot of Jack Daniels before you let me on the air for the first time because we were both so scared I was going to be bad. And oh, then it yeah, turned out good, yeah. and then I got to keep doing it. And then yeah. I got the full-time job, and I got to stay. And We'll be doing those later. Yeah, where are those at right now? <laughs> well, and s- speaking of sales, you were such a uh, always such a hard worker. Our very first excursion together, where we <laughs> met, we went to a dude ranch in, in the Catskills in it Pennsylvania. Was, yeah, I think the Malibu was... Dude Ranch. It was my first client that I ever sold here. It was the reason I got to continue living here because I was working on a hundred percent commission, and I was literally like. I had like pennies to my name. I had to take out a loan to move here. So that was my first client that I sold, which like allowed me to stay and survive. But Kelly and I went and stayed at the dude ranch and, and we were like, went yeah. horseback riding. And it was a bonding experience. I do want to pull John Fox in here just to quick tell the story of uh, Jesse and I. And I, I mean, honestly, I went from, uh, I, I am not going to have you on that microphone because that's the weird one, John. Either take, take Jonah's or, or Katie. Um, because... Uh, and I think Mike probably remembers this too, so I'll bring Mike in on that. And Jesse, they they flew Jesse and I in, and it was they they secretly brought us to the Nash Bash, and then uh, I mean honestly, I didn't even know we, we Jesse and I looked at each other like, are are we hired? Is this happening? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, be back here Monday. You're on the air. I'm like, I have no idea. And I have children at home in Denver. I'm like, what is happening? And I I was so scared that I called on. A Sunday morning, and I quit before I even started. I said to Kim Bryant, who was the the, the I said I can't do this. I can't. I this is I I I know this will ruin my career, but I can't go. And she said, Yes, it will ruin your career. We have promoted that we are starting a station tomorrow. I don't care if you come for two days or two weeks, but get on the plane. Get on the plane. This has been our motto, Jesse. Now we say, whenever there's any reluctance, our line is. Get, on, Get the on the plane. Get on the plane. <laughs> Get on the plane. Well, and we were when we were sold too. That's the first thing I did, as I got back on a plane and I came back to New York to meet with this team from 345 Hudson. Um, and then the, the stories. I mean, I have so many stories too. But I do remember um, early, like way early, we're sitting in the back office in our old studio. And when Kelly left that day, I kind of looked at you know some of the other senior people and I go, <clears throat> I go. Is she going to be okay? I go, I go, that has been said to me many times and, and, since. And, and they're like, well, what do you think? I go, 
I go, you think she, I go, you think she's going to come back and do the show on Monday? I go, should we be worried? And they're like, well, why do you think that? And I go, uh, were you a part of this conversation I just had? <laughs> did, did you just witness this? But isn't that the New York story, right? It was great. And then really, like, and, 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 and you know what? Like, you and everybody, but like you in the beginning, you and Jesse Addy, it's hard for me not to think, right, that you guys haven't been from here your whole life. You know, you're New Yorkers. I, I haven't seen people come to this city and take it on like a sport, you know, and want to go. Jesse Addy and you, you would drive or take trains to wherever the signal would go, and you'd walk around the towns, and you'd learn about these things, and you would go randomly meet listeners on Sunday afternoon at a place in New Jersey to have breakfast. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse got so mad at me once. He goes, where are we going? I go, we're going to celebrate this kid's 13th birthday. He's like, we're going to New Jersey <laughs> to celebrate a kid's birthday? Cakes, I'm cake. like, they asked us to come. They're so nice. <laughs> Does that sound like something I would say? I think we were going to see Race Taylor. Wasn't that the original? No, intent? remember that... the kid at the, the with the basement Jared. and the yes. Yeah, I remember Jared. Yeah, it sounds oh, like yeah. you'd be. I really remember Hollywood. all of it. You know, what? I also remember. <laughs> He's got a better. I remember, it was kind of related to to get on the plane. Us, I think we were at Del Frisco early on, and we're there with John Fox at dinner and a bunch of other the you know the big time people. And John looks at me. He's like, "You guys got this?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And I answer, and he's still looking at me, and he's like. No, seriously, do you got this? <laughs> I was like, I, I think we got this. But uh, it, it was just like, you know, it was so big. It was so much. The city, country music coming back. And uh, I just, it, what an honor and what a team, obviously, in, in the beginning. And, and we'll talk a lot about the rest of the station, too. But yeah. it's fun to reminisce about 2013, for sure. Please thank you so much for indulging us on the, we, you know, nobody ever gets to do this. We appreciate you. Uh, this is uh, our story, part of your story. You guys created this, 844-947-0947. This is, in fact, a broadcaster's dream come true that we can just talk. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually like, two minutes, wrap it up. We've talked about a, a whole week of shows worth in the last 20, 30 no, minutes. Today is the last day of New York's country, 94-7. We will uh, be off the air after this, uh, should I think, uh, later today. Uh, this will be the last time any of us will be on the air. we got the whole crew in here. Uh, poor Mike's been sitting there patiently waiting. Mike, uh, part of this whole thing from the beginning. Mike, available for weddings and bar mitzvahs. He's a great DJ. Uh, but Mike, Extreme Music Productions. That's right. Wow. I can't afford this, so <laughs> I've been sitting here waiting for a long time. How are you, Mike? I'm great. How are you guys doing? I'm Such... so sorry that we're speaking uh, under these uh, circumstances, but I feel like I'm getting way too used to doing broadcasts like this, where we uh, once we turn the microphone off, it's that's it forever. Yeah. I will and say because Mike Scott Shannon it, talk about it and was bringing me back for two years ago. Scott coming in there being like, "How long have you been doing this?" Yeah, like, Mike was years. also a big part of PLJ. So my big part of uh, New York broadcasting. So yeah, I hate yeah, this. I had mentioned it earlier. That uh, I was, I'm sorry to cut you off, Kelly, but I look at this. Uh, I have one direct message. And can you hear me all right? Yeah. yeah. All right. I have one direct message from Jesse Addy that we've had over the years that I've known Jesse since 2013. And uh, you would think that we'd have more DMs on, on Twitter, but there's only one. And I've made sure that I've never deleted this. And I've made sure that I've printed it. And I have it in all of my <laughs> records for me to, for, forever to have. And it reads, June 10th, 2013. Yo, can you work middays today? Can't find your cell phone. Call me now. And then his phone number. Yeah. And that text message means um, the world to me because that was the text message that I got that really got me my first real show on this radio station and for really for New York radio. Um, I got to audition. Uh, I was the, I think I'm, I, I tell her, but I was the third voice ever heard. On, uh, <laughs> Nash you are, I think that is true as you a show. Are. Yeah. But. Um, John Fox gave me an opportunity to audition on a uh, weird, we didn't really have overnight, so it was like 9 to 10 p.m. where people were actually still listening, so you couldn't really be too um, stealth, but I bombed, man. It was, uh, it was embarrassing. I, was, uh, I didn't want to come back. I didn't want to call him. I didn't want to text him. I was like, New York Radio is over. I can't do this. <laughs> and, I, and I literally, this was my dream, and I sent him a text message uh, 
basically begging in so, like trying to obviously I want to try to play this cool I wasn't begging John Fox to come back but I was uh, I was pretty much begging saying you got to give me another chance I'm going to do my best I, I learned I know how to do it now and uh, thank God that he, he he let me do that and um, it led me to be the fill-in for when you know Kelly and Jesse were getting situated here in New York um, it was obviously from the stories that they just told it was not really a surprise but it was a really a shotgun moment that they had to uproot their whole lives and, and come here to New York so obviously there was some sort of um, you know turnover time where they needed some time off and I was lucky enough to be in that position where everything kind of worked organically for me to be the fill-in for both of them and that text message on June 10th hmm. was a day where um, you know Kelly and we're not gonna go into detail but Kelly was a little under the weather and you can um, I got I believe I had like a stress like I ended up in a Times Square hotel with <laughs> vertigo like the whole EMTs came I'm like naked they're taking me on it was horrible oh it was yeah, horrible was I think happening. it was stress because I had yeah, vertigo I thought, I I thought from hospital. me bombing I thought I bombed my audition. I was going to become the midday person all of a sudden. I thought this was, I didn't Hold know on. what was happening. I, do, I did pull, we didn't have, you know, this happened so quickly. We didn't have a ton of time to pull sound, but I do have something labeled that I, that is Mike Allen. So let's pull this. I, I'm not just making this is up. It my you want to talk about extraordinary individuals. Extraordinary. Easily my favorite part of the show. It's time to show our appreciation for the men and women who are on the front line keeping us safe. We're cheering for hospital workers, doctors' offices, first responders, and more. It is Wednesday night. My name is Mike Allen. Let's go. So this is something cool you did. Uh, yeah, now I you know why we pulled it. It was uh, during the beginning of the pandemic. You did this every night as people were thanking our essential workers around the city. Yeah, this was a, an amazing uh, opportunity that, you know, John and, and, and a lot of us at the radio station had discussed of, you know, what could we do during this uncertain time? And it was it just felt right. I mean, it was still in the infant stage of people going out in uh, swarms with their pots and pans. So we kind of hit it early, which um, I'm pretty grateful for that they gave us this opportunity. But we went pretty, you know, uh, long with it. And uh, the reaction was huge. I, uh, I got lots of videos and tweets of people listening and, and, and following along with their kids. My son was at a cool age where uh, during the night show, I'd bring him on um, almost every night to do a break during the work from home time of the pandemic. And he used to love seven o'clock and going outside and, um, you know, banging pots of pans. There'd be who doesn't um, there'd be it was really special be, time. It's yeah, it was awesome. There was American flags being draped over the apartments that I could see off my balcony and the videos that Katie would send from, you know, uh, down in like lower Manhattan. It was just it was just an incredible it was an incredible time that, you know, I'll be able to look back and uh, say we did something really, really special during a time we had no idea what was going on and for how long it was going to be for. Speaking of that period in time, I tell you what, uh, I think one of the those moments uh, you were talking about. <laughs> There were two moments that I've uh, gotten sick and uh, you fallen can... Fallen ill. Fallen ill. And uh, <laughs> this was one of those moments in time at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, I'll just play this for you. Sure. Uh, I'm doing a show from the Upper West Side today. Kelly Ford was not on the radio this morning. It's called me Quarantine Kelly, Jesse. I'm now uh, self-quarantined. I do not know that I have coronavirus. I definitely am super sick. I started getting a cough yesterday after feeling free. So then cut to, you know, two months later when I'm given plasma because I did get COVID. Pretty good about myself today. I feel like I have a superpower after donating my plasma yesterday. You have juicy, good, great veins. <laughs> I survived coronavirus and then tested positive for the antibodies. The plasma that we collect from you would be going to the COVID-19 patients who are currently sick with it. So I'm kind of like an X-Men pretty much, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just remember that. That's how I want to be remembered, everybody. Juicy big veins. <laughs> I thought you were going to go the superhero route, but sure, that too. <laughs> and I was going to say team player. You went, you went all for it. You yeah. got COVID and gave plasma. And I think back to the point of uh, first responders and uh, for frontline heroes listening, this was one of those moments that I certainly will never forget. Talking to the face of healthcare heroes, Amy O'Sullivan. She was on the cover of Time magazine. 
I had your radio station blasting in my Jeep, people would blow the horns at me, the few that were on the road, and give me a thumbs up and say, hey, thanks. I would have to turn the radio down, say, you're welcome, it's all good. But you got me through the morning. I'm, I'm not kidding. Every single morning I drove in. It's really because of you that and the music and how you your, your tone, your energy over the radio. I know that might sound weird, but I, I, I'm telling you, I pick up on it, and it's super cool, and it made me feel good inside, and it was wonderful. It made me forget about what was going to happen. Aw, this back in the early days of the pandemic, that means a ton to me because, you know, in those days it felt like who was listening, who was out there, and, and that makes me so happy, Amy. And after that, we listen to country all the time. ER nurse, COVID survivor, Amy O'Sullivan from Wyckoff Heights Medical Center in Brooklyn, one of Time Magazine's top 100 most influential people in the world. Oh, Kelly Ford, I love you. Seriously. Love is a competition and I'm going to win, Amy. I love you more. Yeah, okay. We'll see about that, Kelly Ford. <laughs> That's been a very, very fun theme. I think uh, it, I want to bring Sabrina from Queens in on this, who's been icy crying on Zoom. She's uh, <laughs> she's out in California. Sabrina, you've been such an amazing addition to the morning show. So real. So fun. Grew up, I hate this, but grew up listening <laughs> to New York's Country 94.7. You know, I want to, it's so crazy. I posted an Instagram a few weeks ago and someone asked me a question. They were like, how did you like end up on air at 94.7? And the story of how I got here is like, it it always brings a tear to my eye. And John Fox always loves when I tell this story. Um, So I started here as like a local sales assistant for the company. And when we bought the station, I'll never forget, we got announced it on February 13th, 2019. And everyone was like, oh, my God, like, Sabrina, like, you love country. Like, you have, you have to do something. You have to say something. And I'm like, what am I going to say? Like, hey, guys, I love country music. <laughs> so I got up at a sales meeting, and I was basically saying, like, you know, guys, we should be so excited to have this station. Like, these are who you're appealing to. I was showing pictures of me and my friends at concerts at Jones Beach and PNC. And, like, this is, this is who you have. Like, you have these people wrapped around your finger. And John Fox was like, you, you're coming with me. And... Ever since then, we got close. He brought me in on meetings. And one day, Sabrina being Sabrina, I walked into a meeting talking about The Bachelor. I was like, oh, my God, guys, like, who watched The Bachelor last night? Like, are you so sad? Someone went home, blah, blah, blah. And John turned to me. He goes, this is exactly what I want to hear on the air. And I go, you're such a liar. I'm like, you're really kidding right now. I'm like, yeah, okay. And he was like, if you're here tomorrow morning at 620, I will show you the thing. And I showed up trying to call his bluff i'm like yeah i'm here like let's go hmm? yeah. what's going on it. and he's like he goes great get in that chair and put a headphone on you're going on and i was yep. like oh wow and it happened like you're not kidding you <laughs> have sure been... there were some f-bombs in there yeah exactly <laughs> there, <laughs> there are a couple uh words i can't say but <laughs> i think this is a great uh little sampling again we didn't have a we just found out about this so we didn't have a lot of time to pull sound together but this is uh kind of a little bit of the chemistry with sabrina and jonah just here recently I want that ring. I will mug her for that ring. <laughs> if it's missing, blame me. When Chris Jenner comes here. <laughs> I'm very curious to see what Michelle's love language is. You know, let's be that. honest. Everyone's love language on that show seems to at least be part physical touch. If you I'm can, a mix of all yeah. five. <laughs> Like, one of like everything, please. You are the United Nations of love <laughs> languages. I I'm, love that. I'm your worst nightmare. <laughs> and there's also the Yankees losing. 6-2 in Fenway. I love the whole 6-2 Fenway. Like, you're perfect for these kinds of like, stories. Yeah. When there's bad news, ask Jonah to deliver it. <laughs> Zara James. Oh my God, Alan! I love is- that store. I think it's, is that where they got the idea? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> we named you after a really great clothing store, baby. We wanted you to have discounts your whole entire life. Now go hang out with your sister Claire's. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Mrs. Blackman. Blackman, I'm not married. Oh, Ms. look Blackman. at you! Available guy. A caring, wonderful woman is available in Brooklyn slash Long Island. The cattiness, and they're like, yes. I gotta go tell Kate. It's a like tattletale nation. Yes. I would be the one attracted to the guy in the corner just being cool and aloof <laughs> and, and completely emotionally unavailable. It's like, oh, look at that one. He doesn't care about me. I want him. The one minding his own business? <laughs> I will crack his code. He will be mine. Anyway. I'm a long-time listener and this first-time caller. Oh, I my God. Know. I always want people to say that. I didn't know people actually said that. Check 
Check it off the bucket list, yes! baby. Having so, so much fun. So you've been an amazing addition to the show, Sabrina. Um, I'm going to try and do this without crying, but um, I just want to say that I love you guys. And, you know, I'll never forget the day that I first met you all. And I thought you were all like the coolest things in sliced bread. And the fact that you guys let me in and welcomed me like so newly as this weird chick from queens like i love you guys so much for allowing me to do this so. we love you i thought you were gonna say that you thought we were the coolest people you knew until you got to know me i know <laughs> katie nerds. i have a, a snapchat memory on my phone saved and it literally is a picture of me shrieking and the caption goes oh my god i just met katie neal and she complimented oh. my boots my day is made oh. Sabrina, I love you It so was a little much. pair of red booties, and we were going to Luke Combs, and I was like, Katie asked to hang out with me at Luke Combs, oh and she God. likes my... It's like two influencers <laughs> meeting two influencers. They're like, what? This is going to sound a little maybe weird, but I'm concerned about everyone's future on, on this particular conversation, except Sabrina from <laughs> Queens, a star is <laughs> born. Woo! Get out the way. Come That's on. right. There's been about 1,800 people calling. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tracy, who I know is listening, I'm holding Hawthorne, but I do see our hotline ringing. So I think oh. we might want to check in with that one first. Oh, I don't I mean, know who it is. You want me to screen or you just want to no, jump in? Let's just go live, baby. We're working without a net this morning. All right. When New our hotline York's rings, we know it's someone. Three ninety four seven. Hi, who's this? Hello? Is the phone up? Let me see. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. It's Melissa from St. Jude. Oh, oh Melissa. Melissa. You are on the air. I should mention that. Oh, yeah. well, I'm listening as I always do, and I just wanted to call and give you all the biggest thank you from the absolute bottom of my heart for all that you've done for the kids and families of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Oh, I'm getting cured up. What the heck? Um, guys, you have raised over a million dollars for St. Jude and wow. in less than two years, and that is life-changing. I just want you guys to think about that. You have changed absolute lives. You've saved lives, and you have helped us at St. Jude more than I could even say. You have brought so much knowledge and awareness and fundraising to the tri-state area and it's something I could never say thank you enough for uh, personally I love you guys you have been bright spots uh, to work with and I just adore you all so so much and I am a devoted listener too <laughs> and uh, guys just thank you seriously thank you Melissa, you guys, what you do on the daily is so inspiring. And, and you know, um, it's funny. I'm so glad you called because uh, we we all did get together and, and we thought we were going to do it at the end of the show. But if anybody does, you know, if their heart speaks to them and, and they are saddened by the loss that this is the last day of New York's country, 94-7, I'd just ask you you know to give a donation to saint jude so it's good it's good you called because you could give a number that is, so sweet. You know, is there a number where somebody can call to give a donation in 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 the name of the station yes let me pull it up because right, i'd guys. love to keep track of that that'd be amazing melissa yes, thank you as i look at it i think too i just want to say that the way that you guys have authentically supported our charity is something that is so noble thank you for loving st jude and if anyone does want to donate in honor of new york's country they can call 1-800-822-6344 it's 1-800-822-6344 i'm going to say it a third time because i always make <laughs> it it's like she's shoving a post-it note in her face 822 6344. Oh, look how the tables have turned, guys. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know That's what? So that would make beautiful. me so happy to just do one last good thing. Because that's really been the greatest part of our job here. And when you came to us that first time and people, you know, we we joked about it, but people are like, oh, you know, New York can't pull off a, a radiothon. New York won't help. So I, I, it's just over and over and over. The listeners of New York's Country 94.7. And our people have shown just how big hearted and country the people of the tri-state are. 
that it is it is part of the soundtrack of this amazing oh. area. So yeah, if that would be awesome, if we could go out just doing one more last great thing. And if you want to make a donation to St. Jude, that would be uh, just icing on the cake for us. 800-822-6344. Do I have to say it two more times? Katie, you, Katie, you do it. Katie, Let you me do see it. it. Yeah. 1-800-822-6344. And a third time, because that's what Melissa always coaches us and tells us to do. 800-822-6344. And I can't not let Melissa be on the phone right now without loving on her a little bit. because She's She is one of the most unbelievable people that I've ever met. And I love and I trust her so much. She is the person who watches our dog Fleetwood Mac every time we go to town. He's literally currently at her house right now. Shane is going to get him. So I just, you are wonderful human and i am so glad that you called us oh guys i love you so much i'm gonna let you go i'm listening i love the stories thank you from the bottom of my heart and thank you so much from st jude seriously love you guys thanks thank melissa you. Love you. melissa with st jude today is the last day of new york's country 94 7 yeah we are as uh, as surprised as you are but we are so grateful that we get the opportunity to say goodbye and you have the opportunity as well of course our socials new york's country 94 7 and you can call us 844-947-0947 we're taking our time and again super grateful that we're given that opportunity to do that. We take that uh, trust very seriously, and uh, we appreciate you taking that trust as well. So let's go. Uh, let's let's keep the keep the working without a net going and go to line two. Who's this? Hello. Hello. What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, Tracy. I'm from Hawthorne. Hi, Tracy. All from Hawthorne. Hi. Hawthorne. <laughs> What's going on, girl? I, I think I've, like, started the grieving process already of denial, as I'm sure all of you have. Kind of started I, yesterday, I, yeah. It's, it's just crazy. Um, I, I, could, I could be here for an hour telling you and thanking you. You know, you say you, you inspire, and the things you've done in my life, I can't begin. Um, my office, we started donating to St. Jude through our pediatric dental office because hmm. I saw all the good that you guys did and I got to choose a month of giving and we turned it into an ongoing, so not just a month because just how influential you guys have been in, in that department. So I thank you for that. Um, I've met Jesse Addy and Katie Neal at um, Point Pleasant Boots on the Boardwalk. <laughs> And the pictures in my phone, I have, are, they're amazing. Just how the, fun was that? The influence that was so on, fun. on my life. I'm sorry? I said, how fun was that, Tracy? That was just, what a oh great time. Oh, my God. It, it, priceless. Priceless. You guys are so down to earth. You know, I, I came home, showed my kids, and they're like, Mom, are you friends with them? <laughs> and I'm like, well, not really, but yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's like, what it feels you, like. They're like, you, you follow them on Instagram like they're your friends. You like comment. You really think they read it? I'm like, they do. They do. <laughs> they're, they're real people. They're so down to earth. Um, I did, I won tickets. Um, I was in, in a really bad car accident in 2015. So I was home and listening to the radio. And you guys had camp tickets. And my daughter, she's a singer. Mm -hmm. And that was like her biggest, biggest fan. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to win these tickets because I was physically broken, but it was, I was more financially broken. So mm -hmm. her birthday was coming up. I had nothing planned. We did nothing. And I called in and I won the tickets and I brought her there to Starland Ballroom. And to this day, if somebody mentions country, anything, she's like, oh, my God. So Jesse Addy bought me a coat. <laughs> <laughs> he was hanging out That's with so... us. My mom's really good friends with them. So I'm like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Like, yes, you are. It was just, it was amazing. Uh, Jesse, I, I don't know. I'm sure you don't remember. You meet a million people. But you gave us extra time with Cam for her to talk to her. And, you know, just the, the, the inspiring moments from that as I was watching them talk. She's in a band with my husband. She rocks any stage she gets on. It's it's bar band stuff, but that's, loves that's, it, kills yeah. it. So great! It's it's just amazing. 
It's just amazing. It's so interesting. I bought you a Coke because I just think I owe about no, no, no. 1,345 people. Oh, no, you <laughs> bought her a gin. A thousand people a drink going around tailgates. And, you bought her a vodka. Oh, wait, bought no, you bought, you bought okay, me we're vodka, good. but you didn't want to leave my daughter out. So you're like, can I get you a Coke? <laughs> oh. Well, you know, just bringing that up, we haven't even gotten to Jones Beach, PNC, uh-huh. tailgating, uh, mm-hmm. Kenny Chesney at MetLife, my memories of like uh, Rich Popsky in the Milford Fire Department and the, 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 the pool they made out of bales of hay and tarps <laughs> and just the epic times we had uh, at, at all of those events. In fact, should we bring up tailgating, the Are You Smarter oh Than a Tailgater, gosh. which oh. is been so much fun. Jesse, you have some of the things that we did at Tailgates. Can you I pull? Have, this is a moment if you want to, if somebody wants to grab it there. Um, and it's called, it's under Goodbye uh, Tailgate, where you would find it. And while this we is look one of these the, nights. Yeah. This is one of these nights where we would leave Tupin Plaza. John Fox and I would race down and try to catch like a 703 train or something like that. Yeah. And then. <laughs> Then we grab like you know something and for the ride, and then we're fighting with it. What is it Freeport? Is it Wonton? And you get in the, the Uber, <laughs> and you get there, and you're just like, I mean, just such of those epic nights. And you know, you Jesse know, loves that, being just on time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Jesse loves loves being just on time. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't do just on time <laughs> like very well. But, All right, uh, here it is. Live from the Florida Georgia Line tailgate party. The party is underway, but we found the best tailgate. <laughs> Florida Georgia Line tonight. Kiki, tell everybody who you are with me. I am with Kayla, Mel, Meg, Tia, Peggy, Chloe, Grace, Will, Lindsey, Grace, and Kristen and Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, this has got to be the party of the summer so far. Oh, these guys are great. They just taught me a brand new game that I probably can't talk about. Katie, Neil, we got Morgan Wallen, but what else? We got meet and greets for people. We also have meet and greets for Hardy. We have meet and greets for Dan and Shay. It's all happening. Florida Georgia Line, Morgan Wallen, and, of course, Florida Georgia Line. We're just all here hanging out, singing together. Live from Northwell Health, Jones Beach Theater. It's New York's country, 94-7. Yeah. So much Who fun. Who had more fun than us? Nobody. Who had more fun? That was, that was epic. And actually, the big graces. Sabrina from Queens bonding. We started out doing the best game on our show two summers ago, and it's mm. this one. Are you smarter than a tailgater? Are you smarter than a tailgater? You don't get to use a calculator. Really? Why not? Kelly's here and now you're on the spot. Have you thrown back too many brewskis? Uh, Pete Moog, um, retired New York City detective. Pete, you think you're smart? Yeah, pretty smart. Uh, how many ounces in a cup? Uh, depends on the cup. 12, 16, <laughs> 8, 7. When we're, when we're doing a giant tailgate, we do 8 because some people leave their drinks around. So, But if you're a real good drinker, we give you the 16-ounce cup. How's that? Here we go. Question number two. What is the capital of New York? Come on, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Albany. I yeah. felt like you could complicate that answer No, as well, I so can't I complicate that one. I, I know the, the one the governor lives there, you know. <laughs> I'm smarter than a tailgate. I know tailgate. Your final question, Pete. All right, go ahead. Name me just one of the Spice Girls. Oof. Peppa. <laughs> Peppa. Oh, my God. They'll never Epic. get old. Oh God. They'll never get old. So, good. so much fun. All right, we're going to take a quick little break. We have so much more to talk to you about. You guys created this. New York's country, 94-7. We can only look forward uh, as we say goodbye. This is the last day we will be on the air in New York City. We are so grateful for the opportunity. A lot of people don't get the chance to say goodbye in this stupid, crazy business. We love the chance to be able to say goodbye to you, share our memories. We'd love you to share yours on our socials, New York's Country 94.7. Or you can call us 844-94.7. This is Kelly Ford in the morning. New York's Country 94.7 is WNSH, FM, and HD1 Network. New York City and Odyssey Station. Consider us.
Blast your friends in oh so low places, <laughs> especially now. Uh, today is the last day of New York's country, 94.7. Every time I say that, I feel like you're going, that's a joke. It is not a joke. Uh, we are really grateful to be able to say goodbye to you. Not a lot of people get to do that. Actually, this is the second time in my career I've gotten to say goodbye on the air. Either that speaks a lot to my character, or <laughs> it means uh, I'm not sure what it means. We won't. She's go gonna into burn that. this place down. If she doesn't <laughs> get to open this, this mic. This is the time she's gonna crack. We'll see. You know. <laughs> Listen, uh, we've got everybody in here. The room is full of people that we love. The people that have really started the station from the beginning, and all of the amazing people that have come on board along the way, and. And two years ago, we uh, joined a new company and we made brand new friends. Now, I have actually cried a lot yesterday when we got the news. I've kept it together this morning, but I kind of can't look at you guys. So I'm going to look away. These uh, We share this area with our friends at New 102 and uh, Karen Carson in the morning, who I uh, feel like is a kindred spirit because we're both just, you know, ba- BABs. Boss ass women. Yeah. Uh, who? Oh, Boomer's in here too. Wow, it's the whole crew. Uh, everybody's in here. Well, and we we have been supportive of each other, and I just want to say you're the biggest badass I know. And you are in my world where I come from in New Jersey. I mean nothing. <laughs> Kelly Ford is the biggest rock star to all my friends. And so is this country. And I was just saying to John Fox, I've never seen a more talented, amazing group of people. I'm not kidding. From top to bottom, everybody here is a superstar. A rock Your co hosts are standing right next to you while you say this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Yeah. But I love you so much, all of you. And this is just the beginning of something better. I know it. I know it, but John Fox, congratulations on the coolest station I have ever listened to. Be such a yeah. I really, and you guys are such a pleasure to work. You're all going to be fine, and we love you. And I'm you and he, you and I have to do a podcast together. Yeah. Like, you're not going anywhere. I love you too yeah. much. I thought you were going to say you two need to do some shots together. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that'll happen later for sure. I tried to find some whiskey. Now, I, couldn't. I have to say that during the pandemic, starting last October, I do have to say a very special little goodbye to Anthony over here. Because Anthony, yeah. Anthony and I came in when nobody else was here for a very long time. And I always talk with because this is how Anthony talks for real. <laughs> and uh, we have a special bond. Because we, we were in here alone together a lot. And, and I'm like, Anthony, put some pants on, dude. You don't live here, right? There was a long time where you and I walked around here with just underwear on. <laughs> but no one knew. No one knew. I have a secret about you that, I mean, since, you know, I could tell it now. Yes. As respected yes. Yes. and loved as you are in this building, you're also respected and loved outside the building. Because I've never met somebody who has more cart guys out on the corners attracted to her. They each bring something different to the table. Well, well, you, you know, Jim down. has my, my favorite little Kreller donuts. Yeah. And then Wafa has the iced coffee I like. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, you can go to... I'm I'm a single woman. I can go to different food yes, cart you guys can. for different things. You can taste anyone's bacon, egg, and cheese whenever you want. Thank you. Yeah. I, feel, yeah. I felt judgy, though, Anthony. No, not judgy. But I, I love I think you. Think they'll miss me, don't you think they'll miss me? What are they gonna they do? They will, but not more than me. Aww. Love you. I love you too. I really I couldn't look at him this morning, so Aww. I love you, Andy. Well, I All guess right. it's my turn. Yeah, it's yeah. your turn. Hi, Hi, Hi Boomer Kelly. Esiason. How are, How are you doing? Okay. Good. I'm okay. You, yeah, you I, I did okay go into him. Morning. I went into him this morning. I'm like, all right, coach, be my football <laughs> guy. Tell me how to lead the team. Well, you led the team like you always lead the team. You know, you uh I'm going to miss you guys. I really am. I love this radio station. I really do. And I spend a lot of time talking sports. And when I want to get away from it, I want to hear great music. And this station always brought me great music and great personalities. And you shocked me this morning, I have to say. And when I told our crew downstairs that you guys were leaving, they were like, why? You know, we loved you guys. And we do, we do love you guys. And we had a great boat party this summer. That so we, fun. So it was awesome. So much fun. It was great. And uh 
I don't know what to say other than I know that you guys are just too talented not to find your find your way in life like you always do, like we all do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted to come by and just say how much I love you and how much I'm going to miss you. Well, this whole building, thank you, Boomer. You guys have been so gracious to us. That boat party, truly, I'm not lying. It was right before my birthday. So it was truly one of my favorite days of the year because you guys created such... It was like an event I'd never been to, and you asked us along. We got to be the dinghy to your yacht, oh. and, uh, <laughs> and, and we brought along uh, country artist Jordan Davis, yeah, and it was, great. was so, you created such an amazing event. So, you and, know, it was interesting. We had two weeks ago, Gio and I were talking about doing it again, because we had such a good time doing it. So, oh, we're going to get 94-7 uh, we we'll get your own country guy. I know. Now we're going to find a whole nother country <laughs> thing. I mean, it was just so much fun. It was so perfect. So I don't know what all this is about. All I know is that yeah. uh, you've been great partners up here. And you can see I'm getting checked up. <clears throat> it just sucks. It really does suck. But I know wherever you're going, you're going to be great. And I love you, and Kelly. I'll always be there for you. Yeah. If I could give people a, a hot boomer tip, if there's a Lanco show in town. Hold on. Hot boomer, hot boomer tip. Hot boomer tip. From if, there's a Lanco, if there's a Lanco show in town, boomer size and will be there. 100%. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Love yeah. Lanco, man. Uh, I do. And you guys brought it to me. You know what I'm saying? You guys brought me Lanco. What oh. did I tell you? Well, we love bringing oh. you together with our stars. Yes. Well, thank you so much. And uh, love, you. love you guys. Thank Take you. Take care, guys. Thanks, boomer. Thanks, boomer. All right, we have another very special guest on the line right now. Um, I tried to pull all the people together that were part of the history of New York's country 94-7. And, uh, wow, this goes back. I mean, it already feels like how could it be almost nine years since I now, doggone it. Uh, Ugh, I've done so. Have I done well this morning? I've done You've pretty done well. Really well. You've done I don't know why this is getting to me, but Blair Garner right now. <laughs> Blair Garner might be the the whole reason I'm here, actually. So Blair Garner is on calling from Nashville. Blair, you talk. You do that so well and so smoothly, way more smooth than I am. I was listening to you, and you know, it's it's just such a. a as Boomer said, it's just kind of a sucky day, right? And I, I listen to you, and you do lead every step of the way. I've, I've witnessed it in person, and I know the love that uh, is being showered upon you, and I think entirely uh, the entire station. There are, there are moments of time that are just forever locked, and you will always access them in days that uh, you kind of wonder what's going on. And, and there are a lot of times that you and I had together, Kelly, that I will forever cherish. And I, I know what must be going through a lot of people's minds in the tri-state area today, thinking about, you know, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Uh, I, I wish that we knew that answer. We just we just don't. And I think about all the love and support that you and I experienced, and, and Chuck and Terry and all of the people who've been on the air at NASH. Um, there's something truly special about the people in the the New York tri-state area. And, truly, uh, I just I how do how do you say that? It's 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 the last time I was there in that building was um, you know when they were flipping PLJ. And now we're in a different building. <laughs> yeah, so two down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you're such a huge part of the. You were the first morning show on Nash yeah. and part of that history and it's hard to believe that today is the last day I, you know and you also know Blair that it's very rare that and I I so appreciate I'm sure you do too the opportunity to say goodbye to the people who did create this who Absolute, have yes, supported yes, it yes. it's pretty huge to be able to do that yeah it really is and I think back you know John Fox thank you John uh, thank you to the entire family there that has, has worked you know in, in behind the scenes to put the station on and I've continued to cheer on and, and uh, wish everyone the absolute best and I'm just so I'm sad you know I'm, I'm, I'm so sad that this music that is the fabric of our country in so many ways and it's a it's a format that represents I believe the qualities that uh, are most important in, in challenge times especially like this where we we look to gather strength through each other by sharing our stories. Our music does that, I think, more than any other format. Amen. And 
it's got to be it's got to be tough. It's it's gonna it's gonna be challenging. But to everyone who is listening, I want you to know, just as you know, Kelly was referred to a moment ago as a badass woman. Um, she is all that, <laughs> and you know, ten times more. Uh, she is a woman of strength. She is a woman who perseveres, and I have never seen her allow a, a you know an upsetting moment to define her. That's the thing about Kelly, and that's the thing about anyone who really is a champion of Victor. You know, it's it's not about the fact that we do from time to time get knocked down in life. It's it's we who choose, and it is choice. We choose to get back up, and we don't allow moments like today to define us that will not happen to kelly ford <laughs> or to anyone Anybody. at anyone at this station Mm-mm. you know not at all i feel like that mirrors our listeners too because you mm-hmm. know we are out there in the trenches all the time i, I i've said that over and over again because we nobody i think this whole room will agree <laughs> nobody is out with our people more than we are yeah yeah. From the get go, we've been the ones out there all the time with them. So I feel like if anybody understands that, it's it's because it's hard to say we're one of them if we're not living the life they're living. So uh, I'm glad you said that because I feel like that's just who they are and who we are. So mm-hmm. absolutely, Blair. It's uh, Blair. It's Jesse Addy. Good hey, Jesse, man, dude, how are you? <laughs> Every Katie's here. Too. Everybody's Hi, in the Blair. room. Hi, Katie. I just want I just want to brag on Blair for a second. Um, uh, listen to Blair for a long time. I'm getting emotional about Blair Garner. <laughs> I did too. Um, I know. <clears throat> just so people know, um, Blair Garner is one of the greatest radio personalities in the history of American radio. Oh, Jesse, goodness. Um, and, well, that- uh, <laughs> what a, what a pleasure uh, to work with you, and to, and to start this station. And uh, and the point of this is to give a plug for the Mule House. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in Tennessee, because okay. <laughs> I know Blair won't do it in this moment. But yeah, I'm very just proud. If, you, if you're going to Nashville, a little road trip out to uh, Columbia, Tennessee, right? Columbia, Tennessee. We're about 40 minutes to the south of Nashville. We, uh, Eric, formerly known as Off Eric, and I. Uh, you know, let me just go ahead and put something else out there that that I, I, I regret having not mentioned on air. Eric is my husband. Mm-hmm. And um, we, I'm, I'm very proud of him. And uh, we, we have uh, branched out. And we opened up a music venue, and it's called the Mule House. And so, if you want to see what it's about, uh, just go to themulehouse.com. We recently, I guess I can share. Uh, Miranda Lambert and the Pistol Annies came and shot five videos. Yeah, uh, wow. the other day. Boom. We've got Amy Grant, November fourth. Uh, we had sold out shows of Lee Bryce and Uncle Cracker, and it's really a lot of fun. But and 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 that's what I want to encourage not only the crew that is working at the station today, but anyone listening. You know, in in times of disruption, it it does take an infinite amount of courage. But in those times of disruption, there are always opportunities. Mm-hmm. You just have to look for it, and then. What you have to remember is what no one else can see in you. When no one else can see what you see. I saw a thing from Steve Harvey just on YouTube the other day, and I would encourage you to look it up. He's a really inspirational guy. And he talked about the power of imagination. And he talked about, you know, imagination is simply the evidence of the next big thing that is coming. The fact that I'm sitting on my cell phone in Columbia, Tennessee, you know, I can walk in any room in this house and I can walk outside. Why? Because somebody was sitting in their kitchen on a corded phone and couldn't go outside in a beautiful day. Mm-hmm. You know, every single thing we have began as someone's imagination. And to Kelly, to Jesse, to everyone, Katie, and everyone listening right now in this, in this kind of challenge day, remember what your dreams are. And, and be fearless about marrying action to that dream. And you'll wind up in the, the wildest, most rewarding place. And that's where Eric and I are today, you know, living this dream of building a music venue. Well, now you know why we launched the station with Blair. Like, he is, like, uh, high atop a mountaintop. I want to go to the Mule House and, and see a sermon by you. That's why you're amazing. And, you know, when I was on the air with you, you hadn't come out 
and it was so hard for you and I to see you guys blossom as a couple and you know that I have a child that's transgender and that it takes bravery to be authentic and it's really hard today now more than ever so your bravery is it you know cuz you get pushback you get but people can see through bs now more than ever so i think well, you're amazing you, in so many ways and i want to thank you for that Kelly, because oh, drop my phone sorry that phone that someone um, invented <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know there we had a meeting where um we were all challenged trying to figure out you know where to take the show and i was i was really really torn up in fact i was in tears and crying and uh, I said that it was really challenging to be authentic and to be able to, you know, relate what had happened the day before because, uh, you know, Eric is my husband and our kids are our twins, by the way, they're going to be 18 next month, Kelly. Oh, my God. Um, Stop it. Yeah. How are we still only 30? <laughs> That's on, I, I don't know it's how weird, that huh? It's well, Kentucky math. I do. It was a Dixie <laughs> cup and a whole lot more. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know. I was I was just facade and and Kelly is the one who said it's okay. You know, may, maybe you do need to tell everyone. And and I I just couldn't take that step. It was too painful and and I'll be honest with you Kelly, I regret that. Uh, I I wish I wish that I had done it. But you know, as you said, not always do you get the chance to say goodbye and uh you you just gave me my chance to come out on uh, you know they're great. Well, look, okay. these guys know that I have a mantra over and over again right now, and it's we are right where we're supposed to be, even if it yeah. doesn't seem like we are at the time. So I believe that we're right where we're supposed to be today. And I'm yeah. so glad that you took the time to call in because you're such a crucial part of the history of New York's wow. country 94-7. Every time we're out, I always hear House Blair. And uh, <laughs> I mean, seriously, Howard Blair and Eric. Tell off Eric we love him and your kids to stop growing up and your the ten thousand dogs you have. Yeah. <laughs> but we love Somebody's you. gonna attack us with the leaf floor in a moment. I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we love you, Blair Garner. Love you, Kelly. You right. Take care, all right? All right. Bye. Thank you, Jesse. Bye, Thanks, Blair. everybody. Bye. Bye now. Say bye. bye, Blair Garner. All right. Oh wow. You feel the exhaustion, the A little bit, exhaustion. but I love it. And I do think uh, we need to say a little shout out to your, our famous friends, right? Yes. Absolutely. So I, we started Famous Friends as a group. And we said, listen, there's really one prerequisite to be a famous friend. You listen to New York's Country 94.7. But it was based off the Chris Young song where the famous friends are friends you may not have never heard of, but they're famous to us. The healthcare workers, the teachers, iron workers, everyone who really makes not only this country and the city run, but this station and this format really survived and so this group has just been so beautiful like the song that's nominated for a cma november 10th and then chris young got wind that we'd stolen the concept hey uh, kelly are you still doing the thing where you call in and talk about your uh, your famous friends is that, is that what it is yes uh i got a question for you it's kind of weird but have you ever talked to uh the artist is chris young right my gosh <laughs> like did that did not sound like you at all dude how are you gonna have a thing where you have people call in and talk about their famous friends and you're not gonna tell me about them? <laughs> hi chris young hi so again, we just got told that we were going off the air today, so we didn't get a time to put together a full Famous Friends list, but here's uh, some of the Famous Friends that we put together. This is Victoria. I'm calling from Rockville Center. Kyle from North Arlington. This is Dawn, Hazlitt, New Jersey. My name's Vicki Passaru. I'm a nurse. I'm Andrea from Oak Ridge, New Jersey. My name is Debbie. I'm from Oceanside, New York. Good morning, k Fall. It's TJ, your friendly neighborhood iron worker. My name's Jen, and I'm calling from Richfield Park, New Jersey. Monica from Brooklyn. This is Beth from South Brunswick. This is Michelle from Little Falls, New Jersey. Anne Murray, nurse from Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx. Chris from Queens. Hey, my name is Laura from Freehold, New Jersey. Hi, I'm Danielle. I'm a teacher in New Jersey. My name is Debbie. I'm from Oceanside, New York. John K. I'm from Brick, New Jersey. Hey, it's Nicole Lacey. I'm calling from Harding, New Jersey. I'm Cruz Roman in Florin Park, New Jersey. Hi, my name is Julie 
Good morning, Kelly. Vinny from Staten Island. Vinny. How are you? Hi, my name's Lori from Fairlawn, New Jersey. Hi, I want to be a famous friend. I'm Michelle, and this station has made me feel at home. Mm. I just moved up here. I'm from Texas. Zachary, famous friend number 114. Love this city. Love this country. I'm Kate from Bayville. Proud to be famous friend number 14. Love this city. Love this country. Love this city. Love this country. Love this city. Love this country. Love the city. Love this country. New York's country, 94-7. We do love this city. Love this country. New York's country, 94-7. It has been so good to us since the day we went on the air, January 21st, 2013. So we are sad to say goodbye today, but so happy we get the chance to say goodbye to you, 844-947-0947. And uh, we're getting some surprises. Uh, our hotline is ringing again, and I think I got a little a little hint of who's calling in. It's this guy. You, but I don't love you like I used to. This gets better every time you kiss. Russell Dickerson. What's up? What are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for taking time to call in and say goodbye. Oh, man, absolutely. I was just getting all emotional listening to all those famous friends calling in. And, man, I had to, I had to call in. I had to. One of my greatest memories, Russ, or our greatest memories, yep. Katie. Oh, Katie's crying. <laughs> Russell's an emotional person for me to talk to. I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. And, and Jesse Addy's here. The whole crew is here. But our favorite memory is? is the the summer kickoff. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Down the oh. shore oh. with you. Memorial Day weekend 2019. Little did we know, like, uh, that was the start of such a great summer. And then, you know, the next summer would be canceled. <laughs> Right. Oh, my. Yeah, I'll never forget that. Just jumping in the pool at the end of the show. So many people there. Oh, man. That was uh, that's some good memories right there, peeps. And and we go, you know what? I should try to pull Stephanie Wagner. She's uh, on our Zoom call. Steph, if you want to uh, pop on clean feet again, um, we're just doing real talk here. Stephanie probably would like to say something to you. But uh, Stephanie is, uh, we met uh, you and I, Russell, before anybody knew who you were. Remember that? Uh-huh. That's right. Because we That's did a right. bar night <laughs> out at the Far Rockaway. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. And had so, Good so much time. fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now to see you doing so great makes my heart so happy. And, and uh, it's been so great to watch your star rise. Man, well, thanks to you guys, because without you guys, I couldn't have taken it to the level that we do and every time we come to new york and you know pack pack whatever place out it's just because of you guys man seriously stephanie that big that big f- that's stephanie <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> do you want to say hi to russell who you were so instrumental in kind of bringing us together and watching him him rise yeah hi russell <laughs> what's up girl uh it's a weird day for everybody today Oh yeah, I know. God, I mean, I woke up. I woke up to Fox's text, and I was like, "No, this can't be real." And so I, just, I just had to call and just at least talk to you guys, man. Wow. When you go full circle, I think one of the last shows we saw you at <clears throat> before the pandemic, when was you were on the TR tour, Thomas Rhett's tour at Madison Square Garden, and I think I texted, man. I texted you. And Kaylee and said, you, like, I mean, I love Thomas Rhett, but you really were on fire that night. And you could tell, like, that was the launch pad. Like, you, I just, uh, it was, it was great. And I, and thank you for saying that because, you know, I think Stephanie even mentioned we have been the outlet and the place people got their information to go to these shows. So, I mean, yeah. obviously they'll still get information, I hope. But uh, it means a lot that that you, that, uh, that you recognize that and that we've been any part of helping you get out there. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, growing, I got family in Long Island. And so, like, for so long, they're like, yeah, there's no country stations up here, you know, growing up. And then finally, New York gets a country station and they were all freaking out because, you know, I started doing country. You know, I was really pursuing this at when 
when this station came out and they were like all freaking out they're like oh my gosh we can finally hear you in new york and everything and so it's like i don't know it was just such a huge moment uh so you're right i hope they do i I mean i don't know what's gonna happen but i just want to just say how instrumental you guys have been seriously do you remember the first day that you came up to the radio station and we played your song yes (laughs) <laughs> so this was when I was still transitioning and auditioning for the job that yeah. I have right now. And my yeah. boss, John and Fox, that- really wanted to see if I was capable of doing it. And he said, I'm worried about your ability to react on your feet. And so well, one ooh. day I was sitting in there and I turn around and John walks in with this very tall man. He says, this is Russell. Play his song. Put him on the radio right now. Oh. With no, I literally, I had never seen Russell. I had never heard his name. I didn't know his song. Yeah. And he sat down and I was shaking and I said, what's your name again? Russell Diggers- Diggerson? And he's like, Diggerson. I was like, okay, and what's, what's the song? And I honestly, I completely, I blacked out. I turned on the mics and thank God Russell just started talking and it was magical. And the whole time I was like, I'm going to call my mom and tell her I didn't get the job because I blew this interview live on the radio. But we had so much fun and that was like, you were just starting out on radio tour and a couple months later I got the job and I feel like yeah. if there was anybody that was there for like the moment for me, it was you. You were there on like one of the yeah. scariest days of my life. <laughs> yes, that was the, that was the beginning of Russell Dickerson and the beginning of Katie D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so special to me always. Well, they wanted to brag on girl. wanted to brag on Russell uh, for a second because I mean you talk about a stand up guy and you mentioned the Garden Show. For him to remember and stand there and hold the mic on one of the biggest nights of his life and mention New York country swag, I thought was just the oh coolest yeah. thing ever. It was not our radio station. It even, because I was like, you know what? I respect that. Yeah. That man knows who got in there. <laughs> Steph Wagner. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. That didn't have to do with me. Yeah. Right. I mean, you could have thrown us in there. That would have been cool, too. But we were very happy for Country Swag. We're like, would it kill him? Would it kill him? I know. All right. Redemption now, though, dude. Too late, but redemption. It was just such a full circle moment because, like, literally the first time I played New York was sitting on top of a bar on a bar stool with a microphone duct taped to a mic stand and, you know, singing out of one speaker, one DJ speaker. And, like, people could could have cared less, you know? And then to go from that to Madison Square Garden sold out with Thomas Rhett was just, like, this insane full circle moment. Pretty freaking cool. Well, you're amazing for calling in. Uh, Man, th- thank you for taking I the love time. You guys. We love you yes. more. Love is a competition, yes. and we will always win, Russell. Yes, you will. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> and I know the listeners of the Tri State love you. And appreciate you oh, taking the time. I love to all y'all. I love them. Well, they created this, and uh, yeah. it means a lot that you took the time to call on the, the very last day of New York's country, Absolutely. 94.7. How about we hit a little of this? California. Hey. So good. Russell Dickerson, <laughs> thank you for saying goodbye. Yes, guys, love you all. Love, love, love. We will see you down the road for sure, my friend. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. This is New York's country, 94-7 for a few more hours at least. Grateful for the opportunity to say goodbye, 844. There you go. This is so New York, this country song. (laughs) 844-947-0947. Only in America, New York's country, 94.7. It's Kelly Ford. At least we're in New York's country, 94.7, for a few more hours. Every time I say that, it seems surreal. But yes, today is the last day. I would like to say um, I have very little mascara left on my eyes, but I feel like pretty good guys. Haven't cried too much on and off. I've got the whole crew here with me. I'm Kelly Joan of the New Guys, hey. Sabrina from Queens, Jesse Addy, Katie Hello. Neal, John Fox, our secret weapon, Jason Goldstein, who's been on and off the air. Uh, we've got Mike Allen. We had Blair Garner on earlier. Um, just reminiscing. You guys created this. We've been talking to you at 844-947-0947. Yeah, we wish it wasn't true, but I tell you what, we are ever so grateful for the opportunity to say goodbye, to not just disappear into the night. Um, It's been really, truly the most impactful 
eight plus years of my life, my world changed dramatically and I couldn't be more grateful for all the ups and downs. And uh, I, I, uh, one of the people that we have worked with these past two years here at Odyssey is Patty Steele. Who has worked with a legend, a legend in broadcasting? Oh, <laughs> worked with Scott Shannon at CBS FM, and she came yeah. in to say goodbye. It's been fun. Scott Shannon was in earlier. Boomer Esiason, our mm-hmm. peers here, and you had such great words of wisdom earlier. Well, first of all, I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage because you showed me that note from your son <laughs> this morning, <laughs> and I started to cry. Yeah. Um, you know. We don't get to see each other because we're on opposite each other. But I, the thing that I really have always loved is when I see you in the hall, there's always a sense of joy. And I know that that joy goes with you and that you will take it to bigger and better things. It's tough because uh, country music is sort of the most purely American form of music. And it's I'm sa- sad that it's going to be silenced to a certain extent here with the loss of you guys. But, you know, challenges, and I was saying this earlier, whenever I've faced challenges in my life at the other side, it's like, thank God I went through that because it makes you bigger and stronger and better. I have been shown to the door at so many (laughs) radio stations and it always makes me, and you get to the point where you feel like, great, next, what's coming up? And I think that that is really important. Um, I always carry affirmations on my phone, and one of my favorites is in the depth of winter, I finally learned there was within me an invincible summer. And that, you know, you take that with you. You take that with you, well, no matter what those times are like. As long as that joy is right in there, it's going with you, and I can't wait. I can't wait to see what you do next. And all of us. I mean, I feel great for... I feel like this team, I think you know this too, people Mm -hmm. spoke to it earlier. This team is like a a once-in-a-lifetime team of people together. Like people in the building being like, come on. One of you is going to talk about each other. One of you is going to crack. <laughs> the rest of us do. <laughs> One of Why you don't you is going to crack. That? Um, but no, that's it's... been the coolest thing. To yeah. We've all all along had a, a little something to prove. Mm-hmm. I love you, Anthony. Bye. <laughs> you told me that I'm my best friend, Anthony, from, yeah, Anthony. from Brooklyn, from Bensonhurst. <laughs> I love you. Say goodbye, Anthony. I love you, Kelly. You're my best friend. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 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 before you go, <laughs> Patty will love this. Anthony taught me uh, the secret to alternate side parking when I got my uh, when I got my car. You gotta tell him the, that story. You'll love so this. So for a while, Kelly didn't understand that there's ways to get around alternate side parking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you gotta yeah. Just, New Yorkers will love this. You figure it out. I told her how when I first started parking in New York City, I would get a ticket purposely at the beginning of the month mm-hmm. and then put that ticket on my car the rest of the month. And they never, you know, cops would walk by, they'd see it, they'd go, they'd oh, just look at it. Oh, somebody's ticket him already. Yeah, yeah someone got like, him already. What do I do when the street sweeper comes? What do I do? Do I move? Do I, what do I do? Don't worry about it. Just leave the car there. But what if somebody looks at me with a stink eye? Don't worry about it. You look at them and you say, don't worry about it. Take a walk. Take a walk. Got Mama Luke. Yeah. And that was it. The Mama Luke. I love you, Anthony. Love you. Thank you for your amazing advice, Patty. You, oh, oh gosh. As a I, woman in the business, you, I've always looked up to you. Yeah, and, yeah, well, I just I love seeing you in the halls all the time and in the ladies' room occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna miss that yeah. while we tinkle. Yeah. <laughs> Chit-chat. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been so you. great. 844-9479. Yeah. I gotta bring up uh, one of my, another old partner. Oh, no, he's not always gonna be so mad at me that I called him old, because he's so young. First, let me tell everybody who you are, my friend. Riding in Cinderella. I mean, I hope that's you. I never said hello. Is it Chuck Wicks? I think that's me. That's so long ago. I forget myself back then. It was, I was like, is that little baby Chuck? That's Chuck. Hi, Chuck Wicks. Um, well, you were such all, a huge part of the history of New York's country, 94-7, and it is hard to believe that we are going off the air today. Everybody's here, Chuck. Katie Neal, Jonah the New Guy, Sabrina from Hi, Queens, Chuck. Jesse Addy. Hi, Chuck. I love every single one of you. I will never forget when we would take trips up to New York, because when we were based out of Nashville, it was some of the best moments that I've ever had in radio. And I am hearing this for the first time. I've been listening on the line 
for the past three minutes. Kelly had texted me. She goes, call me. It's an emergency. I'm like, who sets up an emergency, first of all? <laughs> I go, all right, something's going to happen. And I can't. I, I am speechless. I can't believe this is happening because New York listeners, the New Jersey listeners, are – I've toured every single state. And I'll never forget it when I hit my last state. I think it was Maine. And I've done a show in every single state, even Hawaii. And some of the best listeners, if not the best listeners, yeah. come from New York and New Jersey. And, you know, my dad's from Long Island. I grew up in Delaware. And it's such a special place. And I hate to hear this. And I, I want to say something to the listeners right now. And this is, this is so maybe inside radio. but And I don't know why they made the decision to... We're not really focusing on that, Chuck. We're being no, grateful I, for this. I know, I know. But I want to say this to the listeners. Uh, is, is when it comes to decision-making and when it comes to like, oh, not everyone is accounted for that listens to your show, Kelly. Mm -hmm. When it comes to ratings, ratings don't touch everyone. Mm -hmm. They don't. There's someone listening in their car right now that listens to you every single morning that no one knows about when it comes to rate. No one ever knows about that person because for some reason of how they work the system. And that's unfortunate because you guys, to me, Nash FM, 94.7, now you change it. See, that's how long it's been, 94.7. Okay, yeah. Today we can it, say, today we're allowed to say both. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's such, it, to me, it was an iconic place to be and I was so proud of you when you went up there and took the reins over and it's just unfortunate I I love you guys so much the listeners deserve you guys um, the, I know I know for a fact that every single artist when they find out this news when Jason Aldean when Luke Bryan Darius Rucker the biggest stars in our format Harry Underwood when they hear this news they're they're gonna be brokenhearted about it because New York is the place to go for an artist. We love going up there. We love touring up there. We love visiting the station. And this is just an unfortunate phone call I did not want to get. Well, for those uh, just joining, Chuck, uh, to, to replay the history of the station, in 2013, when we launched, I was doing Middays. Chuck was part of the Blair Garner Show, a crucial part, really co-host of the show with Blair. And Chuck is not just in radio. He's also, that's okay. Uh, Chuck's also uh, a, an artist. I mean, pr first and foremost, he's an artist. He kind of, his side hustle is radio because he's so, <laughs> because he's so wildly likable and delightful. <laughs> and, uh, and we just had great, Chuck and I always had great chemistry. In fact, there were moments along the way that we hoped it would be our show, <laughs> that we would be co-hosts. I tried to get him up here a few times, honestly. Uh, we've always, uh, we've always had a, a thing for each other in a, in a great relationship radio way but I think you know I often said to him you know you should be doing your music like radio is you shouldn't be wasting your time on radio in some ways right but but again that selfishly we loved having you on radio as well so I think it's really cool that you can speak from both perspectives not just as a person who's so crucial to the history of New York's country 94-7 in and it's eight plus years but also as an artist who's you know making great music you just you just launched a, a single with Jimmy Allen who's on Dancing with the Stars right now and I love that He's crushing it. Um, I will say, and you know this, Kelly Kelly and I have talked multiple times just while you've been up there and doing your thing and just kind of pep talking to each other and, you know, having rallies for each other because, you know, it, it is a tough business um, and you never know what's going to happen. But there's one thing for sure. I know we're both believers, and I think everybody in that room is a believer, is that everything happens for a reason. I'm not sure of this reason, but I know – at the end of the day, it's going to come clear and everyone is going to land on their feet. Good people land in good places. And you, all of you guys that I worked with up there from John Fox down, it, it, it's just like the best group of people. I was so mad, Kelly, because when, 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 we did want the opportunity just <laughs> for the two of us to work together. Um, 
I, that was the one place I missed being was New York I, I, and New Jersey. And because it, honestly, it, it felt like home to me because I was up in from that up in that Northeast area. I was a Northeast boy, you know, so um, I love you guys. I don't I wish I had something to say because um, I know I know it hurts. Um, I mean, really, if you I don't just even, speak I don't to the listeners almost. I know, I, I know, because it does feel personal, but it also, I think for our listeners, just just saying it's going to be okay, but, you know, I, that would be awesome. It is going to be okay. Um, the listeners up there, you guys are the best. Um, don't stop going to concerts. Don't stop speaking freely. Don't stop being you. You know, don't stop being American because that's what makes us great and that's why we deserve country music in New York City uh, and its surrounding their areas. I, I it, it breaks my heart for you guys but something's going to pop up. You guys are always going to have country music. The artists are always going to come up there and tour no matter what. We're always going to do shows until then until we find a new home because Kelly all you guys up there Katie, I don't know who's in the... Everybody's uh, here. Jesse. Jesse's going to be oh, heard if you don't mess, what mention up, him. Jesse, what's up, man? <laughs> uh, I just... you know, It's so hard because you guys know that I'm such a, such a goofball. I'm... I, it, and I want to be funny, and I, but I'm like so... Okay. I'm honestly pissed. I am pissed off about this. This pisses me off. <laughs> and you know what? I could say that. I don't know if you guys are saying it, but I don't work for the company. I don't... So I'm pissed <laughs> off about it for Did, you. And it, it's you guys are going to be okay. As far as, as far as personally, your your life, I'm not worried about any of you because you're so talented, you're so wonderful. That's why you're in the biggest market in country music, and it should stay that way. It's unfortunate it's not, but you're going to land somewhere where you deserve, <laughs> and you all deserve the top. You know, when I was in Nashville in August, I I uh, I know we missed each other, but I wrote down and. <laughs> I wrote down a wish. I was like, try. my wish was, and this is why you have to be careful when you make a wish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, I wish that I could no longer get up at 4 a.m. Now, this is the problem. <laughs> I should. When you make the wish to the genie, you have to say, I should have said, I wish that I could no longer get up at 4 a.m. but not be unemployed. Specificity is the name of the game when you're dealing with a genie. Yeah. Don't leave a That's dot, right. dot, dot Darn in the wish. Darn it. <laughs> Chuck Wicks, I love you. We love you. I love you guys. We will see you soon. I love that. You know what? It's killing him. He's like, I can't be funny. I don't know how to be funny on this. I can't, I can't be funny, and I and I kind of want to cuss a lot right now, but that, um, is, that is the one thing I made a promise. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Do not use your mouth, Kelly." <laughs> uh, well, listen, guys, um, you all have my cell phone. I have yours. Let's stay in touch. Let's see what's next for us, all and right. let's see what. Let's hopefully, hopefully, there's something next for all of our listeners because they deserve it. Yeah. Well, we love you. Taking the time to call. I mean, I, I did say 911 and it's two hours later. Now I know. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. I was busy putting a Mickey Mouse hat on my kid. So I was- <laughs> oh my God. Oh, wait, follow Chuck Wicks on socials. His kid might be the cutest kid I've so ever cute. seen. John Fox and I decided the other day that your child, you'll love this so much, is a Lego baby. <laughs> Like a it's, Lego it's baby. hair. You know how they have those Lego hair? Oh my gosh. It's yeah, a Lego baby. Lego, yeah, when you oh put the hair God. on the Lego people, it's it is. That, it's a great you know hair. A kid <laughs> born with a full head of hair and his little cheeks. I just want to sop him up with a biscuit. I can't. You can't post pictures of him anymore. Is it cute? I'll, le- I'll leave you with. I'll leave you with this about my kid. Let's let's leave on this note. Uh, instead of the, I want to, you know, sop him up with a biscuit. Salute, yeah, salute the number one <laughs> finger to everybody. Um, okay. I, I, uh, when my wife was giving birth, I don't know if I told you a story or not, but my kid had so much hair. Um, <laughs> okay, as, careful. <laughs> careful. No, we don't have to be careful. Or, you know, this is it. Um, <laughs> so, but as my wife is giving birth, the doctor says, you, she, you did tell me keep this. in mind, he's not all the way out yet. <laughs> he goes, he goes, oh, oh, this is neat. Look, I gave him a little mohawk. I'm like, sir. Goodbye, could you Chuck. Please, could you please wait for my baby to be done being born? <laughs> Love you, Chuck Wicks. 
Love you guys. Miss you guys. See you and I soon. Hope Love you, Chuck. Love you, man, Chuck. <laughs> Love you all. John Fox, you were the best boss ever. 844 9470 You created this. We are saying goodbye today. New York's country. You know what I'm a chicken fried. Last day of New York's country, 94.7. I'm saying that so calmly. Like, yes, Kelly Ford, along with the whole crew. Hey. What's the cowbell, hey. Jonah? Yeah. Trying to make some extra noise. Because <laughs> if I said, yeah, you'd say, oh, yeah, there, here's Jonah's excited voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the voice. That's oh, man. Fall. Hearing Zach Brown. Reminds me of really our last big hurrah, Stars and Strings, which was just a great concert to go out. It was really a magical night on 9-11. Um, we assembled such an amazing group of artists on such a day that we thought, wow, you know, this is such a, a day that we need to remember in the right way. And set the right tone and with Zach Brown and Darius Rucker and Chris Young with the backdrop of, you know, the Brooklyn Bridge on one end and the Statue of Liberty on the other and the tribute of light coming down. I mean, that will be for me one of the greatest memories ever of our time at New York's Country 94-7 with you First responders who Katie, Neil, and I have so many memories of talking to over the years on First Responder Friday, which we will get to in just a moment. But the, our, our little our hotline has been now ringing crazy as word gets out around the country and particularly in Nashville as artists are starting to learn uh, what we learned late yesterday, that this is the last day of uh, country music being on the radio here in New York City. Wow, now that one I felt. Yeah. <laughs> that one hit me. Um, so right now on the line is truly, uh, uh, particularly me and Katie, one of our favorites. Half of my hometown still hanging around, still talking oh. about that one touchdown. There's still a Kelsey Ballerini means so Kelly much. <laughs> I want to crawl through my phone and just hug all of you. Oh, means a ton that you. No, stop. It means a ton that you took the time to call this morning. It, uh, man, I was, I was just telling Katie. I was scrolling through my pictures, and I feel like I have pictures with you dating back to I don't even know before Nashville, originally here when the station started in 2013. <laughs> like all the incarnations of both of our hairs. <laughs> I was you like, know, wow. All, all the phases of life. No, I mean, I, from the very, very beginning, I, you guys have been, you know, so good to me and such a big part of, of sharing, like, my music to so many people. I, I um, yeah, I, my heart breaks. I'm, I'm, I'm um, so grateful for, like, all of our, all of our good memories together. And God, I, you guys all need a shot at tequila and I'd love to be the one to do it with oh, you. I know, right? Let's I was go. actually, I was thinking about this, Kelly. One time you and I were sitting in Bar Taco in Nashville, which is like the spot to go eat tacos. And you were like, that's Kelsey Ballerini over there. I'm that kind of new guy. She just started dating. And Kelsey, this was actually, <laughs> oh, I, I forgot I about this. I completely you. honestly forgot about this. But Kelsey, this was actually, that was the first time that I ever met you and Morgan. And you guys had literally I... just started dating. This was like super fresh. This is probably, what year was that? Like 20. 15 maybe yeah yeah maybe even 14 oh my god that's crazy i'm like isn't he cute i know you guys were so cute together oh, <laughs> now they're married. and i also like think about uh, this the super fun times that jesse addy and i had with you when you did your album release album release which was i will very, never forget that night do you remember that you would originally plan to do it at the waylon and then it changed to the waylon which are in two very different parts of town <laughs> jesse and at, jesse addy and i were up in hell's kitchen at the waylon and <laughs> I was like, trying. No, no, you need to be at the way Lynn, which is down. I was trying not side. to throw. I was trying not to throw up in the cab because we're, like, we're gonna be late. It's this big deal. Let me get there. We made it just in time. We but it was amazing. What was so epic, cool epic about night. that night was I. I remember planning that like the day of because I didn't really have anything to do that night, and I was like, man, I can't just sit in my hotel room in New York City and put out an album. And like you guys helped us pull that together in 24 hours. It was it was insane. Yeah. That was such a fun night. And that was, I was a very hard hangover, too, to come into work the next morning because the album came out at midnight and we were all there yeah. until 5, 3 in the morning. You're right. You're right. You're right. Oh, my gosh. You guys. 
Well, I'm sending you all big, big love. Um, Katie Neal, you know I love you. Love you. And um, hopefully I'll see you guys all soon in person. Um, but, yeah, big, big hug. And my heart breaks for all of you. But um, thank you for all the wonderful, amazing memories and for spreading all the good country music to the beautiful city of New York. Yeah, and the tri-state, and thank you, I mean, you know, for bringing the music here and, and speaking to the fans, because, you know, earlier, we, uh, Chuck Wicks just called in right before you, and we were talking about the fans in the tri-state, and I always say this about our fans, because you know this as an artist, it's the, the secret with the artists that we can only say here, is that fans here not only choose country music, they defend it, mm -hmm. and they yep. defend it with that passion that you only get from someone in the tri-state. <laughs> They're like, yeah, I like Kelsey Ballerini. She's a girl. What about it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. She's amazing. Have you heard a song with yes. Kenny? They're both from Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We love you so much. We will see you love soon. Love you guys. Thanks, Kels. Bye, guys. Appreciate it. Kelsey Ballerini, New York's Country 94.7. We got John Fox in here. I think it's a good time for you to step up and talk a little, John. It's <clears> been <throat> a hot minute. Uh, I didn't mention, I haven't mentioned Mike Allen, part of the original crew here in a while. Sabrina. Now we got Dave Plotkin, who's one of the producers here at 1010 Wins. And Dan Mulqueen. Patty Steele still in here. Jason, uh, Jason Goldstein. Dan Mulqueen and I took the Aer Lingus trip to Ireland together. There for the station. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really, I learned a lot about Dan. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm more concerned. Hey, Dan, why don't you step up to the. Uh, yeah, come no. on up, Jerry. Get yeah. up here, Jerry. Hey, what's up, Jerry? <laughs> no, we're good. It's a great opportunity. We feel really lucky to be able to say goodbye. Not a lot of, not a lot of broadcasters get to do this, and I know you fought for that, John, so thank you. Well, yeah, and you guys really, you've earned it, um, which so you, you said that earlier today. You know, it's a testament to your character. Uh, to be able to come in here and, and have a conversation um, that's so hard this morning. Uh, we do have to do some business real quick. So this is WNSH FM HD1 Newark, New Jersey. Wow. We you should get, do that for a living. We have to get a legal that's ID That's John's there. job. That's so, John just got his new gig. You know? <laughs> Don't get in trouble. Listen, I'm trying. I'm trying it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yes! Would, would, would you like me to put my Mr. Voice on? It's, well, I, gotta, I do got to tell the story. I wish Dan Kelly was with us, and he's the voice behind the scenes, uh, you know, that does all the things in between the music and then there's a couple companies right and these guys get together and they have parties and I would always make fun of them I'd be like when you guys are all around these voice guys and gals do you guys all like get in your radio voice and be like this is one hell of a happy hour huh <laughs> you know and do all the zips and the zaps um, you know, and you guys have been just telling so many incredible stories, and this is a little bit out of order, but I, I think about so many things that just this radio station has accomplished over the times. Um, and when I got this news, too, you know, I mean, you can imagine the amount of things that, that went through my mind um, and my body, but, you know, <laughs> this, my time here, you know, I'm from New York. You know, I used to take the train down and go to Madison Square Garden and sit there, you know, when it was the blue and the pink seats, you know, and, and, and have a good time and, and dream about walking the streets of New York City. And I didn't know what it was. I'm like, I, I just want to be here. This is everything to me. And I, I, I was working at IBM and I was trying to get a job at Metro North. Then I wound up getting into radio in the Hudson Valley at K104. Um, and I would sit outside of Penn Station and I would just look at Madison Square Garden and go, I gotta be here. And if everyone knows, our studio, excuse me, our studio was up on the 17th floor at Two Penn Plaza, overlooking Madison Square Garden. So when I say that this time in my life, like my time with this radio station and the people in this room and really the people in the city, mm -hmm. I've accomplished almost all of my dreams. Because I dream big, and when Blair Garner was talking about the dreams, like I dream so big, mm -hmm. and we dreamed so big for this radio station, and Jesse Addy and I, and many of you, we used to look at each other, whether it was the Bowie Ballroom, you know, or MetLife Stadium, and we would just look around, and we would take it in, and we would go, I can't believe that this is happening, and this is what really goes on with this music and this radio station. Our people. Our people, Man. right? 
We so would say, say, how are we not number one? Right. <laughs> and, 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 if you, and if you've been in Jones Beach and you look around at the big bowl, right, every sold-out show, and Jesse and I used to go like, yeah, how, how are we not, hey. you know, the number one station? But what I'm trying so to say So imagine is, our surprise yesterday. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you think we were surprised then. <laughs> it really is. And the, and the feeling that you get, and you just talked about Stars and Strings and that event on 9-11, which you know is, it, it, it was so so major in so many people's lives but to hear actually people say that I knew where I was 20 years ago and I will now remember where I was 20 years later mm -hmm. it was really a, a decade in the making almost of the time that we spent in this radio station working with the the, the, the people in the city and towns uh, on building our relationship that we were able to come together that night right mm -hmm. in one of the most tragic times in all of our lives in one of the greatest cities on the planet I'll and have forget. just right and never forget it like there will never be anything that replaces that and we'll never forget to but to be a part of something mm -hmm. right that puts a little bit of a film there of hope mm -hmm. and resilience and a different memory to go along with one of the most horrific days in our lives this brand did that mm -hmm. And when I say that like that, it's you, you listening now, and it's the people in the room that we had enough courage and we had enough resilience and passion and strength to just keep going. If you guys take one thing away from today, know that every single person in this room fought really hard, really long for this day not to come. Yeah. That's all that's, I will say. That's, uh, every yep. we worked our asses. Everything, off. every moment, uh, and it's been yeah. remarkable. And I just want to go through some of the list of this stuff. You know, Kelly came back and she talked about that coming in the mornings. We moved from from two pen to three forty five. You know, we got nominated for ACM awards. Oh, Katie you wanna, Neal wanna, and, and hold on, and Kelly Ford, right? <laughs> and the station as a whole, we got nominated for CMA awards. Uh, Kelly and Katie won a Gracie award. You know, we 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 had the Christmas for the kids we've helped so many different people in so many ways not because we're like oh we have to help it's we all wound up getting together and good things happen when you have good intentions right and that's all we ever had that's what all you guys had so that's what i gotta say to you guys the on-air the on-air team and the people behind the scenes and you said our secret rep and good intentions everyone had the intent to just live out right their their happiness their dreams the passion that they have in life and what's remarkable each and every one of you put yourself second to wanting to do something incredible for somebody else which for me that's what drives me every day and then honestly the fact that we still get this is another dream right the, the fact that we still can sit here um and share in this moment together of what we created is it sad beyond sad but what we did we we, we defied odds in my opinion right <laughs> in a city yeah right you go to wherever you went new jersey long island in manhattan the stories and the smiles really and the composure of people when you looked at them at our events it's priceless and you were on the air the other morning too talking about it. it's not what you say it's how you act and let me tell you something this radio station and you guys acted so classy even in this moment you you've been asked to do one of the hardest things i'm sure in your lives to come on here now and share this time to say goodbye these are your dreams guys i know that you put your whole life in this you spent and we spent more time here and especially in the last few years when COVID came I spent more of my life on this frequency and put more effort into this for this city and for this radio station to do the right thing. That's it. That's it. I love you all. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of what we did. Like, I've always said, you know, it's over when the <laughs> curtain falls. And I, at any moment of these conversations, there's not one thing of regret. Not one. <laughs> Not like, if I only. Yep. Nope. And the fact that I actually even get to say that in real time right now, I tell that to my kids now, and they're like not even two when two months old. You know? <laughs> I said, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to be here for you, and I'm going to teach you just to do the right thing. Because that's what I was taught. Yeah. Stand up for people. Yeah. And follow your dreams. And take chances. And it's really only a little bit more, honestly. If you're listening now, if I could tell you anything, it's only a little bit more Teeny. effort. 
that really makes makes it seem like you're putting in a lot of effort. It's the littlest extra effort, and you could separate yourself from the crowd. Mm -hmm. And you guys put in more than that. It's amazing. But it's amazing. The story is over and over again. John Fox, your name comes up. <laughs> Thank you, John Fox, for believing in me. Everybody in this room, artists, Chuck Wick, everybody said it's John Fox. So you have. Uh, I know you believed in me when nobody else believed in me. You believed in me when, same thing, when somebody had thrown me away, and you said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you a star, kid. I'm gonna make you a star." So it it means the world. And when you talk about dreams and the impact of a life, like think about and and I would just say this as we sign off today in just a bit, there'll be a whole new crew coming in, starting a whole new station with their own dreams and I wouldn't deny anybody the chance to pursue the dreams because we have lived some pretty awesome times these last eight years you know yes and so like they get to start their whole new dream they won't live it as great as we did <laughs> let's just be real <laughs> I, want, I want to say real quick and I know we got uh, someone else on hold on the hotline right now but speaking of dreams just a huge thanks to you to everyone and if you don't recognize my voice hey I'm Jonah the new guy I'm just so new to the station only a few months ago but Kelly and John and Katie everyone here I mean I grew up in New York too I grew up upstate New York here in New York City radio through the static I would put tinfoil on top of my antenna in my room just so I can know what it sounded like in New York City and to be in this room and to be on this microphone right now and not to be escorted out of the building and be asked to be in this room with the talent and the caliber of person, talent and just character-wise, is uh, one of the biggest honors of my life. And to just be here and listen to the history of this station has just been so beautiful. And just thank you guys. And this is... I mean, the phones have not stopped ringing the whole time, so this is just a testament to everyone like me and growing up wanting a station that speaks to them. It's just great. But do grab some pens on your way out. I have a whole thing of Sharpies <laughs> in my bag right now. Are you kidding me? We do have someone else on the line, and uh, I think you'll be excited. Yeah, whiskey and rain coming Aww. down, coming down, splash of bourbon in the glass. This is one of our guys, Michael Ray. We love hey, you Kelly. for calling in. Thank you so much for taking the time to call. I uh, I woke up and uh, was talking to Buffy, my manager, and, and heard the news, and I just wanted to call in and, and just say what, what y'all have done uh, in a city that was made for people to have big dreams in uh, is incredible. And when things come to an end, I like John Fox just said, you know, with the, the the accomplishment is to be able to look back and not regret a thing. And y'all y'all blaze paths. I mean, some of my favorite memories are with you, Kelly, and 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 in New York, it was in Jesse Addy and and, and and Jonah. It's good to good to hear your voice, man. And uh, just so many, uh, Katie, just so many great memories in that in, in that building. And uh, and I just wanted to call you guys and just say thank you for what y'all done for country music. Thank you all. Thank you, Kelly, for what you've done in women and country music. And, you know, these moments, uh, these moments of, of, of uncertainty, whenever something like this just gets dropped on you, uh, especially when you're passionate about what you do, can be scary. But I think as we've all learned in the last 15 months, uh, when a door closes, that just means God's got something coming, you know. And uh, I hope that y'all are, I hope y'all feel, feel that love and the pride of not only the city, but the country music community and what y'all have done. And, and I love you guys. And just thank y'all for, for playing my music and, uh, and, and giving my, giving my chance of, of three minutes on those frequencies in New York city. <laughs> I've sent him a picture the other day when you were just a baby Barclays yeah. center, <laughs> right? They're like, was that your first gig? And we did our very first, what, what was that? Jesse, our first it was Nash, like Nash bash, the first Nash bash. Nash bash. And, yeah. and, and I'm less intimidated mm -hmm. talking to you now because I don't have to stare at your beautiful face, my friend. <laughs> you know? Because he's like in HD and he's just so gorgeous. He's you know? so beautiful. So, you want to kiss him. It's like, I, it's okay. like, like, like all right, I actually feel really comfortable talking to Michael Ray right now. This is good. It was like standing next to Chuck Wicks in photos. I'm like, I don't want to stand next to him. I'm like, I got to go over here. That's, that's got that smooth, man. He's got that smooth, that look. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel I just like remember... I, f I remember Michael stepped up was one of the first artists in the pandemic to jump on and do an Instagram live. And I, I think we were both in our underwear <laughs> talking to each other. And, uh, yeah, I didn't wear pants just... for 15 months. <laughs> yeah, see, so I, 
I just remember, you know, that moment because that just seeing somebody like Michael Ray on our social media was so comforting when New York got hit like no other uh, in the pandemic. So just thanks for being us in that moment, man. Man, anytime. I just wanted to uh, to give you guys a call and 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 tell y'all guys thank you for what y'all have done and and uh, and I I I hate this. I'm you know like some of my favorite memories with you guys and, and in New York City and you know where I'm from, it's a whole different whole different atmosphere than New York City. You know, so a guy like me and these people like y'all to to, to show them the ropes and and uh, y'all always have and always just made me feel like family and uh, and I know that there, there's a lot of a lot of fans that are gonna miss. Uh, 94.7, I'm going to miss you guys, and I'm going to miss you guys. But I uh, just want to call and say thank you all for everything you all have done. And and, uh, and and the next journey is going to be going to be even bigger, if you can even imagine that. We can. We're ready. Come on. Come on now. Hashtag <laughs> LFG. <laughs> That's as close to the F word as we're allowed, by the way. I was about to say, are y'all allowed to, do, are y'all allowed to talk stuff now, or what do we got? No, no, no. I made a promise. I made a promise. And you know my mouth, Michael Ray. But you hey, can, you know, Michael. I need some black sharpies, so if you're going to be you stealing can, pictures, go, go. Man, I need some black sharpies for the bus. <laughs> yeah, grab some sharpies. That's my favorite. I love black sharpies. Oh, I got you. Some of them coffee cups. All too, right. So Michael Ray, you're the best. Thanks for taking the time to call, saying goodbye not just to us, but the people who created the this today on the last day of New York's country. 94.7 means so much. Uh, we do want to get to some calls, play a, a little more of uh, our stories. We have stories to tell. We haven't even really gotten to everyone. Uh, we'll take just a minute uh, to take a break. 844-947-0947. That's the number. You can also comment on our socials. Uh, we just love you. Thanks for sharing this day with us. This is New York's country, 94.7. I am Kelly Ford. I've got the whole crew here. It is our last day together. Every time I say it, it just seems surreal. Yesterday went in slow motion, as they let us all know. I'm Kelly. Jonah, the new guy from the morning show. Sabrina from Queens is here. Katie Neal from Middays. Jesse Addy is here. John Fox, who is his next job is to be a, a preacher, a televangelist. And <laughs> Patty Steele from CBS still hanging out. Dan Mulqueen, who produces Katie. Show and has been with uh, the station for a long, long time. Jason, Al uh, Jason Aldean, oh man, he is here. No. <laughs> That's his, Jason Goldstein, who has helped the station for many, many years on and off the air. Mike Allen has been uh, from the beginning as well. So everyone is here. Um, I did, since we just played Wagon Wheel, Darius Rucker, and we mentioned first responders earlier, Katie Neal uh, started something right before I joined the station called First Responder Friday. And I definitely want to give you credit for that idea. It was, it was such a, a huge, we know, we know, especially during the pandemic, that uh, and I said this at Stars and Strings, our big show. If we learned one thing, it was that, that for people who said that country music is not the soundtrack of New York City, they don't know New York City like we know New York City because we know. I know for sure doing mornings, getting up every day, coming into the studio for over a year while this city was in lockdown, that. We are the soundtrack of the people who kept this city going. The first responders, the police officers, the firefighters, the EMTs, the nurses, the doctors, everyone who was going to work while we all stayed home. Those people, they were the ones listening. So we know we are the first responder station. We know that. Mm -hmm. And you having this idea was was so... Just so on point, so such a way to connect with our people. It just felt like something that we needed to do because I can't tell you how many times I've sat here in this chair at this microphone and someone has called and they're like, we're in our squad car, we're listening in the Bronx right now, or in Staten Island, or ball. Like, and I know how many police officers and how many firehouses listen to this station all day long and EMTs. And so it just seemed like the most natural thing for us to do is to salute the everyday heroes who listen to this radio station and the stories 
that we have heard over the last year and a half, two years that we've done this, like just are absolutely unbelievable. Like I names that come to mind are Joe LaPointe in Staten Island, who's head of the FDMY ceremonial unit and mm-hmm. Captain Clacko in Jersey oh, city. Andy, and he just texted me Liam and all of the, like the amazing people that listen to this radio station. I feel like I want to shout out like all of our guys at PAPD, Sergeant Vitale and yes. Chris and all, of course, all of DCPI yep. at NYPD, Glick and Burn, all of you guys have Marrera and Central Park, of course, yes. Nooch, Andy oh. Nuccio. Our we Nuch. love Nooch. We should shout out our very uh, own Kevin Rodrigo, part of yes. the Speedy now. Of course. And hearing your stories, the rope, I mean, there's so many. The rope ladder rescue from last year, that story. Um, I, the Darius Rucker song does bring up one of the most poignant stories of the year. Of, of the year for me, we uh, we lost a hero in March, a, a hero that ran. You know the story of you they're running into burning buildings while everyone else is running out. Mm-hmm. Jared Lloyd was up in Rockland County, and a lot of people remember the story. It was a uh, assisted living home fire, and he saved countless lives, and, and he died. And the his friends, who now are my friends, in fact, Eric just texted me yesterday uh, before I got news of this, and they reached out. I didn't know them before this, mm-hmm. and they said, look, we lost our buddy, and he loved Darius Rucker loved your station loved the song wagon wheel was such a happy guy just always smiling always said the right thing it would mean a lot to us if you could like dedicate the song wagon wheel to him and 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 Jonah was part of this story too and and I said gosh you know let's let's get these guys on and see what we can do for them and this was all from what we were talking about earlier, what John Fox was talking about earlier, of wanting to do right by people, wanting to do the right thing, and having great intentions. And your intention was not just to dedicate a song for Jared in Jared's memory, but to actually be able to connect Darius with the firehouse, with his brothers and sisters and his kids, to really kind of connect and have a moment of healing and remembrance of someone who literally was a hero. Jared loved Darius Rucker so much, one of his children is named Darius. So, anyway, I was talking to the guys, I'm like, well, I can't promise anything, but maybe I could make a few calls and and maybe we could get Darius on a Zoom. And then I'm like, all right, well, now I gotta make this, (laughs) definitely gotta make this happen. So, I really, truly, there are a few... You're okay. Yep. <clears throat> Take your time. Few moments. You've been of- amazing today, <laughs> Kelly. You've been amazing. You're crushing by the way, it today. This is- <laughs> You're killing it. You really are. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> A few moments in my life as a broadcaster that I go, ah, this is why I do this. And going up to Rockland County that night to host the Zoom call with Darius was one of them because I walked into the firehouse. These are all just great guys. They're all volunteers. Jared was a volunteer. They do this for the community. They do this because they have a brotherhood and a camaraderie, and they they really love each other. And I walked in, and in their communal area, in their bar area, they have a stool with all of Jared's, um, you know, his his stuff. And there's a candle lit, and and his boots are there, and his jacket's there. And then Darius calls, and it was really... I, I don't know. It felt like that moment when, well, here's kind of how we talked about it on the air, and I'd, lo- I'd love to share it with you. It's it's as close to being there as I can get you. I personally feel like God, the universe, puts people in our path for a reason. Last night is a great example of that. Honestly, to be part, even this teeny part of honoring and remembering a fallen hero, a fallen firefighter, Jared Loy from uh, Colombian Fire Company Number One. Jared was like the guy with a constant smile on his face. He always, always had a smile on his face. And he loved country music. His youngest son is Darius. They, they mentioned how cool it would be to be able to connect with Darius Rucker. And you were up there last night to help make sure that happened. And I can only imagine what it was like to be in that room when, when Darius Rucker popped up on that Zoom and was able to connect. There was sadness and tears, but there was some joy last night with the sing-along. So rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, mama, rock me. And they just 
it all sang, and it was pretty amazing. And then I, I just out of no, Jonah knows this. This is the weirdest thing. I didn't even talk about this on the air, but I went to the funeral. I just, as a fly on the wall, went up and went to the funeral. Well, I think that speaks to, I mean, your heart, Kelly, and really that how genuine you are. Because when you say something, you mean it, and when you want to support somebody, you do. And I think there are a lot of instances of, of people in the spotlight doing things for an image or doing things because they think they should. But you did it because your heart called you to. And again, you said we didn't even talk about that on the radio because it it was something that you felt needed to be done. And it was because you had this bond with these people and you weren't just going to check some thing off a box and say, yeah, we're a first responder station, so we're going to do this thing. It's in your heart. It's in your soul. And that it's seen by everybody. But to also be able to work with you these last few months and see that and learn from that has been uh, has been really inspirational and I know that you've made these lifelong bond with these with these guys now because because of this well it feels cool that Eric and Timothy and all <laughs> Eric and Timothy and all those guys uh, trusted me to tell to share Jared's story and for a minute you know also uh, they said uh, we were like well we don't want to exploit it and then then they're like no we want to we want the story told. We want that. We want his legacy to live on, and that's kind of what we're doing today here. And speaking of first responders, I want to bring up Todd Van Duren of Ramsey Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. And yes, that sounded like a plug because it kind of is. Because <laughs> because uh, Todd has really sponsored so many things and been so supportive of first responders and first responder Friday. And that takes money and you supporting Kelly Ford in the morning, First Responder Friday, and so many of the things that we've done here at New York's Country 94.7. Todd, thank you. It means more than you could possibly know. Hello? Hello, Todd. You're there on. You How Hi, are you? Kelly. How are you guys? Good. Hi. Well, listen, it's been just such a pleasure to, to work with all you guys, know all you guys, and you know, I, a few minutes ago, somebody called me and talked to me about first responder, and I said, they said, well, you know, we can maybe, I said, no, 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 no. First responder is the people at 94-7, okay? That's, that's what made it, that's what made it special. You guys just, you know, it was so awesome, and I have a lot of, you know, my, my wife is a, is a nurse, and you know, what she went through during the pandemic and all that kind of stuff, and the way you guys supported this whole thing, and all that you did was just so awesome, and it's just been you know, uh, go, I go back so far with you guys and, you know, uh, Jesse and I go back, I think, I mean, from the beginning and, uh, John and, um, Kelly and, um, you know, um, it's just Katie was, you know, I got with Katie a little later on in the, in my, you know, uh, stint with you guys, but I just, you guys just have just been so awesome and so much fun to work with. Um, you know, and, uh, I, I was thinking about it before. And um, I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, we were in um, doing one of my commercials and producing, and we were having a little bit too much fun, and they overheard us doing the traffic at one of the radio stations, and we all got you know, taken to the principal's office and spoken to. And that was just, we just had so much fun doing that. And I hope you guys remember that. That was just, you know. <laughs> actually, actually, i got to tell you, Todd, Dave Plotkin is in the room, believe it or not. So you have to, I just Hi, had Todd. to put headphones on. I need Dave, to give me a little more energy on that. Dave well, you, Plotkin, you yeah, for everybody that. listening, is a, a producer at 1010 Wins, and he does the commercials with Jesse, Katie, and me, and Todd. So retell that story to him. He didn't hear it. You know, well, Dave, you know, I don't know if you remember the well, right before the pandemic, when I would come in and do a lot of stuff live with you guys, mm-hmm. when we were just having a little bit too much fun in your office, and they were doing the traffic, and we all got spoken to, we all got taken to the principal's office because we were being a little too loud, and they overheard our <laughs> our, our joy on the traffic report on ten ten. That's and, true. Uh, that was just it was so much fun. And Dave, you know what you, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I, you know, <laughs> this is Dave. Okay, I was reporting, I was doing my my commercial remotely, and. Uh, I was actually out of town, and he, I was sitting at a desk. He's like, is there a bed in the room? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, go lay on the bed and put your face by the bed on the microphone. It'll, it'll sound better. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> we stop at no expense to make it sound good. I will tell you, I will tell all everybody this. The beauty of radio is really that creativity. And as a creative director, uh, my favorite thing is to to play off oh, with the true professionals like Katie, Jesse, Kelly, and Todd, and and really make a, a story and tell a story and have fun. Because Todd's more than client. He's a he's family. Mm-hmm. He's ninety four seven family. And mm-hmm. I think that that's what was so special about that. And and to the listeners, that's what's so special about this radio station. So you bond with so many people. It's not just the radio people. It's it's the sponsors. It's the listeners. And uh, to be able to tell that story and bring creativity to life. And kudos to John Fox for letting us do that. And um, we'll really miss you. This was just a, a real blast. Uh, and uh, Todd, what a pleasure. Well, look, I, I, I remember, guys, you know, way, way back. Okay, and this sounds, you know, sounds not that far ago. But when Jesse and I first started doing the commercials, Jesse and I, well, Jesse did it. I mean, I just came in and spoke. But Jesse, we would be in the PLJ studio, and Jesse did the whole deal. I mean, he he he, he, he recorded it, produced it, this, that. We'd go back and forth, and it was just, you know, and that's where I first learned how to, you know, how to, you know, do, do a lot of the stuff that I do now when Jesse, you Yuck know, and we, we had, exactly, <laughs> we, had, we had so much fun. You know, we would, we would take the copy and mess around with it and all that kind of stuff and change things. And, and I just, you know, I just can't thank you guys. You guys just, it's been, you know, you're my friends. It's, you know, I know it's a business relationship first, but, but more importantly, you guys are my friends. And I just, I, I just, I'm going to miss you guys. I love you guys so much. And I just, you know, I want the best for all of you, and I know that, uh, you know, you guys will uh, just uh, find something just and uh, hopefully, um, you know, bigger and better, and it will just be awesome because uh, – I will, I will say – I'll say this about Todd, and I texted him, uh, thanks for keeping the lights on. <laughs> um, I think Mary Jo could go do the books. I think Todd Van Duren, yes. Ramsey Chrysler, G. Dodge Ram, oh my God, is yes. single-handed responsible for at least one year of this radio station <laughs> being on the air. <laughs> single-handedly. You the man. <laughs> well, thank you guys. And like I said, it's been it's been really great. And, uh, you know, it's it's um, I'm, I'm sad, you know, mm-hmm. because uh, – um, it's just been it's just been such a all all of the programs that we've done and like I said you know first responders has been awesome and uh, doing the commercials with all you guys and 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 all the sponsorships and all the fun we've had and um, I just can't thank you guys enough and I wish you all the best and I know we'll stay friends and, and you know and uh, we shall meet again stay in, That's touch, sure. stay in touch we absolutely will and and John you know John especially John Fox too for all the antics to let that go on and all that kind of stuff and but it just it made it and you know it made the commercials were real they were believable they were you know they people listened to them they're like it just sounds you guys are just like you know whatever and that but that's what made it fun and that's what made them so believable and you guys you know just you know made me feel so comfortable in the part of your part of your your crew there and you know i remember you know the pizzas Fridays that we come in, we have the pizza outside, <laughs> you know, at, at, in, on the bar. New York pizza out there. Suprema. Uh, Suprema's the exactly. best. You know, and I mean, even that, I mean, just it would just be the luck of the draw when you come in and you're sitting there at pizza and someone would walk by you like, whoa, you know, who is that or who is it? The people that I got to meet and you guys, you know, just made me feel so part of that and I just can't thank you enough. Well, Todd, so, I, I, and I got to thank you too. Um, I would say, no kidding, you know, you know, not in the air. And I would, I would use you as an example, actually, because, you know, part of the thing was, right? We, we, we all rallied around each other. So Katie and Jesse and Kelly, they were all just part of everything's everyone's show, right? And and I would always say, I said, if Todd and this advertiser wants to use the power of all three of these yes. talents, right? I go, we're clearly doing something right. Yes. And and you really rallied around this team and this these on air personalities. Um, and I just thought that was incredible. I, just, I used to say that all the time. I'm like, we're clearly doing something incredible, right? I go, he can't wait to get all the DJs all involved because they have just such great chemistry together to just share great stories, you know? And, right, you're selling products. Awesome. Um, awesome. And they're here to talk about the radio station. But I, I thought it was just really remarkable on uh, just the level of support and investment that you made in the people that ran this property. And I have to thank you for my, my Jeep named Betty. The Betty. Right? The Betty. We just celebrated yes. our one-year anniversary together. <laughs> well, they even even all, my guys were all texting me and girls were all texting me. It's more like, you know, for the dealership, they're like, what the, what, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's like they're, they're, they're just as, you know, as heartbroken as I am. That's so, crazy. You know, but we you appreciate know, was, you, all your support all along, and we're going to meet again. It's all good, yes, Todd. Todd Van Duren, Ramsey Chrysler, right, Jeep Dodge Ram, we okay. love you. 
All the best. Love you guys. So okay, fun hearing from okay. so many people today. We've got the whole crew in here. Uh, it's Kelly Ford, Jesse Addy from Afternoons. Got Katie Neal in here as well. Uh, today is the last day. New York's country, 94.7. I know now. Finally, I think finally I'm like a drying up. <laughs> It Just, might be time to start thinking about shutting her down. <laughs> People, is it time, John Fox? It's getting close. Yeah, we're getting there. And I, I know we have another special guest that we're trying to get connected to us now. Mm-hmm. Um, Joan is working on it. Uh, somebody who wants to really I talk did, to you. One more thing I do want to bring up. Uh, oh, wow. He might be coming on. Uh, I, uh, we did talk to Amy O'Sullivan. Oh, I want to bring back up St. Jude. We had uh, St. Jude call in earlier, and I think this is a great opportunity. Mel Bird from St. Jude. We She mentioned that in the few years we did St. Jude, is it three years total, guys? Three years? Two or three. It was, uh, it was yeah. two years, yeah. and we, really, we did three radiothons, yeah. though. Yeah. We in, packed in it in there. Yeah, we we, got, it, we in got, there. got it in there. Made over a million dollars. This was the last total. We have raised <gasps> what? $404,732. You did it. That was so cool. We asked so much in such a short time of the listeners of the Tri-State, and you came through over and over again. So this morning is kind of one last gasp of just trying to make a difference because that's what we've done and we want to continue to do as people if you would like to make a donation to St. Jude if you're sad that uh, New York's country 94.7 is going away man if your heart if it speaks to your heart hit them up 800-822-6344 and we can pop that on our socials right are we allowed yes. to do that 800-822 we can do it on our personal socials anyway 800-822-6344. 800-822-6344. I would like to go around the room and just let everybody, since we're all going to be looking for employment and followers, have a chance to give their socials out. I'm the Kelly Ford, as in T-H-E-K-E-L-O-Y-F-O-R-D. Jonah? Well, it seems like a lie now, but it's Jonah on the radio. J-O-N-A-H on the radio. <laughs> Sabrina? Uh, mine is Sabrina from Queens because I will always be Sabrina from Queens. Mine is Hey Katie Neal, H E Y K A T I E N E A L. Jess, your turn. At Jesse Addy, J E S S E A D D Y. Kelly, I want to uh, just thank some uh, people real quick. Yeah. Um, Robbie Carugio, Pub 46, Mother's Ale House uh, as well. John and Patty at the Cornerstone in Hillsdale, some unbelievable nights. With them, Joe and the staff at Nutty Irishman, Farmingdale, they had a DJ, a karaoke band, and uh, a band. It was crazy what they would do. House of Q in Hoboken. So many fun times there, too. Jason always welcomed us uh, at the door at Irving Plaza. Everybody, Webster, Gramercy, Bowery, Michelle at MSG. I mean, the list goes on. We don't have time for all these people. All the super fans. Yankee Steffi that loves Scotty McCree. Oh, Don yes. Antonelli, Luke Bryan's number one fan. Carrie Tracy, the Wayne Tailgate crew, every, and everybody at Hill Country Take Barbie your time, Clark. dude. We got time. Let's all do some shout outs to our, <laughs> our friend. Yeah, I think that's a great thing to do. Nikki, I just mentioned the Columbian Fire Company. Eric said, come see us tomorrow. We can cheer you up, Kelly Ford. Love you. <laughs> Jenny D, Rob Fulmer, Keisha, Mark Chernoff texted me, Cliff Blake, Sue Falco, Lindsay Church, Scott King, Tim Hill, Ty Bentley. He can't get through, but Ty Bentley from Ty Kelly and Chuck. Uh, Joe Nolan, who did traffic, Nick Palmera from the firehouse, our firehouse right around the corner, uh, Holly from Robin Holly, our night show. We got uh, Fletcher, Lindsay L. Lindsay L. Oh, I really should check. I've got 125 new text messages. So, uh, yeah. And just one more time to mention all our famous friends who have been with us for so long on the station and have been amazing in our Facebook group, as you can imagine, has been going on fire this morning. Uh, we will give you a full video recap message later on, but just uh, to Susan Evans and Brian Victoria, famous friend number one, has been in the chat today. Stephanie, uh, Lynn, Matthew Thomas, Jessica, Susan again, uh, Lucia. Aww. It's just so many people have been posting fam- uh, favorite photos that we've taken together. Nice. Uh, just going down memory lane. And we'll 
show there is still a way to get a little bit of country. We can share that with you uh, in in our group. Andrew Lava from NYPD oh, just Lava. wrote that in. That was the one I was trying to think. Yep. Of. I also want to say, like, you guys have named so many people that you wanted to thank, but there's one person that I want to make sure that I do get to give a shout out to, and that is Sweet Anthony from Brooklyn. Oh, for as long oh, as I have been yeah. on the radio. <laughs> Me too. Anthony, I hope you're listening. Anthony is called every day. And he always has the sweetest things to say, and he always wants to check in on me and make sure I'm okay and I'm doing well. And He kind of wants to marry you. <laughs> he does. He's asked me before. But he's just, he's so sweet. And Jesse and I have just spent a lot of time talking to him, and when I was thinking about people I'm going to miss, I'm just going to miss mm-hmm. his pleasant voice every he's day. He's a sweet boy. Anthony, we love you. We love you so much. We can get to more shout-outs for sure. We'd take our time, honestly. Yeah. Well, we really I, can. I just want to say thanks to a couple people, too, because, okay. you know, listen, you guys, I know this is really tough, um, and our time is really coming to an end here. Um, so just thank you. Thank you for sharing all the time with us and and really sharing your lives with me. And there's a lot of people behind the scenes. Dan Kelly is a guy who um, loves radio so much. And he is really one of the biggest backbones of this whole entire operation from production and imaging, but really just like a great friend and a great coach to everybody. Um, Dan, you've been just an incredible human being. Thank you for everything. Um, I got to give a special thanks to Tim Roberts, you know, General Roberts, our, 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 our big time country leader, and Kevin Callahan on the West Coast. We got an incredible team too, uh, Justin Cole and Scott Roddy and Marcy, who have just been so incredible and influential in what we do here behind the scenes. Um, and I want to do uh, give another shout out to uh, a, a, a great friend of mine who uh, who's become a great friend of mine actually, and and, and a tremendous colleague, uh, Clay Walker, who is here too. But Clay works so hard, not only for our radio station, for every radio station in this company. I mean, hours and hours and hours, and just countless so many responsibilities. Um, to make us sounding good and you know we went through hell here in the pandemic and i gotta thank scott colombo and the engineering team Mm -hmm. and kenny and it and everybody here at 345 because we did not miss a beat Mm -mm. when the world stopped and they kept the lights on and they kept it open and they kept everything available and accessible to us oh and matt wheeler or weller here too who runs the front desk who supplied all the studios with cleaning supplies right and followed all these protocols we're gonna steal on the way out right and people had to do the impossible at the time right think about if you go back to, to to march it was you know the things that we had to do um and that's it you know this this on air team and Sabrina from Queens, uh, and Dude. Mike Allen, and Kelly, and Katie, and Jesse, and Robin Holly, and Coop. Coop, there I could go on. I could go on forever and ever. But, you um, want to hit Ray's Taylor you. real quick? I'm going to say thank you to Chris Olivero oh. for um, for really, you know, for letting us do this today. So I know Chris fought hard to let us do this. It means a lot. And we said earlier today, it feels good. I mean, they didn't have to let us do this, and it means a, a lot that we got to do it. We well, and I think it speaks to I we did leave it all out there. Everybody did work really hard to fight to keep this station and so thank you for recognizing and, that. And obviously thanks to Odyssey because, you know, a little behind the scenes when this radio station got bought, um everyone I knew in the industry was surprised that A it was still a country station and B we were still involved. So shout out to everybody who gave us an extra two and a half years. David Field, Susan Larkin, who was the greatest ambassador for us just as people. And I'm so happy people got to hear John Fox and mm-hmm. be in the Fo- mm-hmm. Fox meeting, mm-hmm. basically. Be in the Fox and hole. It's why, it's why people, everyone on, on the radio right now would just go through a wall for John Fox. And yeah. what I he wanna, did to I get us from one building to the other was just unbelievable. Thank you. Yeah, John, Fox. John Fox really, um, I have to say, like... He put a dream into my life, the dream that I didn't even know could possibly exist. He really took me under his wing and made something for me. And and that's something that I'll always be grateful for because you put a light in my life that I'll never be able to to dim. So, I love you, Sabrina. This crew, I'm telling you, look around this room. And there are, as John said earlier, this is a dream. Countless. And I'm forgetting people like Rachel McGrath and Scott Fisher and Michelle Drago. And I could go on and on and on about the people who... Dave Plock. Cicely you Warrington. Oh, and oh, you know, you know what? Hold on a second. You know what we got to do? We got to give a big shout out to our special squad up crew. 
Jessica Clark. Oh, I was going to say, did you say yeah, Jess Clark? Jess Clark. Jessica Clark is another superstar here at the radio station, not only for 94.7, for, for so many things inside the company, um, but Jessica Clark, too, you know, gets that phone call of a new station and all this work, and we really just all jumped in together, and we were standing around one time, and she's just like, you know, you guys are just so cool, and we're all, like, you know, loving on each other, and it's like, you know, when one great squad, you know, meets another great squad, you know, and she goes, you squad up. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what we did. Listen, um, and, and 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 I love you so much, Jess. And Jess really, and, is and, and and Jar, you will forever be Jar, <laughs> Jar. in my life. Jeannie and Raquel and Hey Fox, here's Baby Girl. So shout out to Baby Girl. I don't even know you that much, Baby Girl. But what's up? Mm-hmm. I love you uh, too, and and know you through your friends. But again, and, and I'm really sorry if I'm. Uh, if I'm, Lauren, I'm, if I'm leaving anyone Lauren, out, yeah, Lauren, George, I could go on forever I mean, and ever and ever. So. And again, one more big April shout Shibley, out. Hey, oh, Marissa, yeah, all the way Neil back Dillon. to the old school days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it has been a ride. It uh, Everything, I guess, comes to an end. I had an intuition way back when, and I would say this to everybody in the room. I told this to Katie yesterday. Change uh, changes. It's inevitable, and it comes, and you can embrace it, or you can fight it. And if you embrace it and enjoy the ride, it's all going to be okay. We're going to be okay. I promise this. We are. Just when I Shout out to Kevin her. Jonas, too. Yeah. What's up, Kevin? Thanks, Kevin Jonas, for being a judge <laughs> on Nash Next. <laughs> You can't Our go out on Kevin Jonas. Jonas. But I'm just saying, is, is that <laughs> it? Like, we're, looking, we're looking around the room. Yes, we can. No, and, I, right. and, and I think this is going to be it. And I think we're going to fire this song off here in a second. What do you think, Kelly? Are you are I you ready? To, I need to say something to you guys before we go, because I will regret this. First of all, to John, you gave me a job, and you believed in me in a time when I know you put your own career on the line so that I could have a chance to do this. And I will never forget that. And I am so grateful for you. Well, I'm so grateful for you. And Kelly, you put the dream in my heart. You said to me when you were leaving, you said, you know, you should do my job. You should do my job. And I didn't get to do it for a while later, but I thought that was the craziest thing that you even thought at that point that I was capable of doing it. Jesse, I can't even look at you on Zoom because I could not have made it through the last four years without you. I mean, getting to work with this team of people has just been like everyone always says, the team in New York is just different, and you guys, it has been different, and I love you so much. So much. You mean the world to me. You're the best, Katie. You're the best. Um, when, Jess? I just want to say, I just want to say, um, you hear that love amongst us, <laughs> and um, if you, <clears throat> if you ever listen to this radio station, you're like, do they... Do they feel that way about each other that they act like on the radio or when they're hanging out with artists or when they come to you know, the shows and they're hanging out at our tailgates? Yes. <laughs> we meant every word of it uh, uh, on the air and off. I don't mean to get too emotional because this has been you know, the highlight of my career, but I just I love all these people. And, and uh, we'll, we'll tell these. I mean, we had a few hours here. We will tell the stories of you as a listener and the artist and what we did for the rest of our lives. You created Thank this. You, New York. you made our dreams come true. And when I walked out the door this morning, I'm like, today is going to be perfect. It is the rare moment when there's no wrong answers. Today was perfect. So I guess since I was the first live voice Heard on New York's Country 94.7. I will be the last live voice heard on New York's Country 94.7. And we will sign off with the very first song. I mean, not officially sign off. But how about we sign off all these live, beautiful people with the very first song that we signed on with on January 21st, 2013. Remember this, guys? This is how country feels. New York's country, 95!